Yo, Twitch. Sorry, I took a minute there, guys. Tingus with 68 freaking months. That's crazy. Sean Og with 29 months. That's freaking crazy. Uh, I look forward to next month, Tingus. <laughs> Um, got Thanos with a bundle. Nice. That's a big one. Hey, Aurelian. Hey, uh, Deity. Hey, Sonic. Hey, a bunch of other people whose names I missed. What's up? New season. New card tonight with Nimrod. I waited to open it for you guys. Nimrod. Boom. Pretty fun. We're gonna build two Nimrod decks today, hopefully. Credits, boosters, gold, credits, boosters, mystery variant, pixel, Psylocke. That is a better pixel, I'd say, on average. Pixel, Psylocke. Maria Hill, the apocalypse sucks. Don't tell apocalypse players that. Oh, that's a cool portrait, actually. If I used portraits anyway. I thought you were calling us Nimrods in the title. Well, if anything, I would be the Nimrod in said scenario, I think, right? <laughs> I think that would just be me. Um Yeah, Nimrod though, dude. Let's let's upgrade this bad boy, make him look pretty. His pink coloring is probably not gonna look too great. Maybe the purple matches his logo nicely. We'll get him to purple at some point. I guess right now, actually. Yo, Wing Burrito, what's up, dude? What's up? I got this freaking spot on my head. I got this, like, bright red spot on my head. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it, you know? Like, I, I guess I could have some makeup on hand, but I don't. But it just, it's just this bright red spot, so... Yeah, it's the life of a streamer. I thought it might, it was there yesterday. I thought it might go away today, but nah. It looks worse when I turn my head. Just this, just this bright, perfectly red. Yeah, I know, touching it's not gonna help. I know, I know, but I it's it's like I got a target on my head. Uh, can't, it can't help it. I'm gonna put a big band-aid right there. That'll help, right? Nobody will notice the band-aid. Uh, your shorts been showing up on my feed. Awesome, dude. Yeah, some of them have been doing pretty well. Some are like 50, 60,000 views or whatever, which is pretty crazy for a short. So, um, I started toying with um, a Nimrod deck, by the way, guys. Uh, now we got Nimrod, we can add him in. I wanted to try a, a Nimrod Galactus deck, and I wanted to try kind of a Nimrod Arnim Zola deck, which I think will certainly share some DNA, but seem distinct enough to try both tonight and we'll go for four five three four hours tonight hopefully and get enough games of both these decks to make a couple cool videos is the game plan showcasing the new uh season pass card in a variety of directions uh regis that picture of you where is that i see somebody replying but i don't see the original regis that picture you post on twitter keeps me up at night oh here you go <laughs> do you do you recognize this person uh, i need my hair like that today to cover this spot on my forehead dang it yeah i the other day i didn't i didn't do anything to my hair i let it air dry and that's what it looks like if it air dries in a if, if it's like a really slow air dry and it's kind of rainy out and humid it looks like this so i thought i would share I thought it would share what it looks like for fun. No glasses too, right? It's a totally different vibe as well. Uh, but I thought it would be really enjoyable to see. You look younger. That's from three days ago. So I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. I, I am a few days younger than now. I think I took that on Friday, maybe. No, I guess today's Monday. Yeah, about three days ago. Three days younger, baby. So anyway, I wanted your guys' help to finish off this list. So basically the idea, right? Nimrod, uh, when destroyed, he's going to add some copies. So I thought it would be cool to play a, a deck that's playing for a, for a turn six Galactus instead of a turn 
five Galactus, because I think one of the bigger weaknesses of Galactus is that the opponent sees it coming so hard and it's so easily disrupted early. And, you know, I, I thought if we built a deck that wasn't quite as obvious, I mean, this is still maybe sort of obvious, but at the very least, you know, it's not, I, I don't know, the, like the electro signaling it a turn earlier, the wave signaling it early, I think is really one of the biggest Galactus signals and one of the biggest ways people know to expect and play around Galactus. So I wanted to try it if like, well, what if we just always play them on turn six? And that way we don't have to waste plays on like bad ramp cards. You know, we can use Green Goblin instead of Electro on three, that sort of thing. And then we use Nimrod and Wolverine and Nova and all these cards potentially to, you know, surprise in the galactus location on the final turn so a tin power nimrod uh, uh uh nova adds in you know they've got a green goblin on their side already or whatever and it's like okay we're just gonna win this straight up on turn six and um yeah i want to do arnim zola stuff later the the that that's another deck idea for sure more like straight up destroy stuff but save save those ideas for later because i don't think those go in this deck i don't think this really uh i don't think this really plays for that direction i thought about adding in like a destroyer here as a backup plan but without wave or electro i don't really think destroyer makes as much sense because I, I don't think we'd as easily be able to play it on five or six well i say that but i don't know man if we send over a green goblin hobgoblin if we have an emerald wolverine on board maybe we still can play it on six we're not gonna have that many things that we care about destroying probably right because sure he's fine to destroy yeah maybe it is an okay backup plan actually just power dump 15 on an emerald location send the emeralds to the other locations that actually might be okay I think I like I think I like that okay. But if I'm running electro, like do I really just run or if I'm running destroyer, do I run electro, right? I just didn't want to make I just didn't want to make this an electro deck. Like I wanted it to be specifically turn six Galactus to see if Nimrod could enable that turn six Galactus, right? What else would play well into a turn six Galactus? Daredevil kind of does, but again, I, I worry it shows the hand a bit. Um, we could run other destroy cards. We could run like Forge for Nimrod, maybe, as a backup buff. We could run a Nakia, like hand buff stuff. Is another way to get because remember, our early turns are really just about setting up to get that power later. So Shuri, Nakia, and Forge are all ways to get Nimrod bigger. Arguably Wolverine too, I guess. That could be it as well. Sabretooth. Um, not really. Sabretooth doesn't really make sense here. We could do a zero power card to go with Galactus, but I don't know why you want that, right? Ebony Maw doesn't matter. Move doesn't matter. Uh, Angel's kind of a neat idea. It's another way to like dump stats, but theoretically we're gonna have Nimrods and Wolverines. I don't, I don't know if we need an Angel in there, right? It could be full enough anyway. Yeah, Adam Warlock's an interesting idea. I, a little bit worried about our ability to activate it. Maybe like Adam on two and a Green Goblin on three. Also, I do worry that signals a little bit for us. Does that show the opponent a little too hard? We could do a Cosmo to enable the destroyer backup plan. I kind of like that. Cosmo's a good idea, toot. Certainly doesn't disrupt the turn six Galactus at all and seems fine as a way to potentially pivot into destroyer armor i'm not as interested in i don't think because we really don't have anything we want to protect from a destroyer for the backup plan
Carnage Deathlock and Case No Galactus. If we miss both Galactus and Destroyer, I, I think we're just calling that a loss, right? I think, I think we're just chalking that one up. It just wasn't meant to be. In other words, one backup with Destroyer, I hope, is enough backup plan. Um, Anything else that plays for turn six Galactus specifically? Currently only Nimrod on five. You could do Kang maybe. Could do... Uh, you could do Leech actually. But that's not usually super helpful for the turn six Galactus. Right. Well, we have Hobgoblin too. No, that, that should be fine. You do something like a Hood. It's kind of free, but not great with Destroyer on six either. There's just not a lot of great plays for Destroyer on six specifically, right? Could run Disruption card like Iceman or Korg just to try to ruin them a little bit. Does Ghost ever help us revealing last for Galactus? No, that's kind of risky because there's oftentimes we could be ahead. Yeah, I'm kind of sick of putting Kang in every deck's my only thing. Doc Ock is sort of a fun idea. Yeah, we could create maybe some... Well, I don't know. Though. The problem is if we if we play Doc Ock and we don't have Nimrod, the Galactus is going to be pretty garbage, we know, right? I think we know the Galactus is garbage. Could just do something like Scorpion, right, to reduce their power output. Hulkbuster is a fun idea for Wolverine, I guess. Wouldn't work for Nimrod just from an energy standpoint, right? We wouldn't have the Nimrod out soon enough. The, the whole point is to not run wave in, in Electro. We, we, I want to play for a turn six Galactus that's perhaps a little more surprising. That's the whole, the whole point. So no, no wave, no Electro. Will that end up being right? I don't know. Who knows? But... That's what we want to test. I like the idea of Scorpion, right? Just a little bit of a debuffer, something to keep their power in check. So when that Galactus hits on the final turn, they may not have enough power to contest it, right? Plus, I, again, I think it's another card that maybe doesn't point to this so well, which is nice. Card we don't mind losing to Destroyer necessarily. We could do something like Bucky Bards in this spot as a backup for Destroyer, but it's really bad for Galactus, right? Really bad for Galactus. Okoye is another option for the nokia forge style line but i wonder if we actually like okoye better than forge it has a chance to hit both galactus and nimrod forge we don't really want to play on four very often maybe we do i actually i think i think i still like the scorpion though i don't know i, I do like okoye though that's a fun idea Could do cloak, um, but it's it's on turn five that I'd want to be playing it, which is when I want to play the Nimrod or Hobgoblin, right? I think that's the issue. I mean, you don't have to play it on five, right? You can play it on four or something too, but I have a turn three would be the only time I really want to play it. And by turn three, I mean, I guess there would be location knowledge that would perhaps make the cloak interesting. But again, this is one of those Galactus signalers. I'm trying to avoid the Galactus signaling as much as I can, because that's what I want to try to do. Uh, hey, Denver Wombat, dude, thanks for the 10 months. And Bin ja, Binjo Big Show, thanks for, the, thanks for the Prime sub. That's really nice. Null would have no time to be played. We don't have any energy cheat, so there's no way to get Null down. All right, let's, let's, let's try this, guys. I like this in theory. Will we abandon the turn six Galactus thing? I don't know, but that's the hook. That's what I want to try to achieve, so. Hopefully we don't have to. Okay. Um, Shuri Hobgoblin is another way to make a turn six Galactus just really good, right? It doesn't have to be Nimrod necessarily. This is kind of the the backup condition at the moment. Uh, Monster Metropolis is not actually as good for us for this build with Galactus. We're not likely to have the... Highest power thing, but it might be necessary because Eternity Range obviously is a huge risk with a rock. That may not be a Galactus option at all. So let's just try this for now. That's a good Galactus spot. We'll, we'll put uh, 
We'll put a goblin there. That's fine. Oh, Galactus in hand too. Okay, this is lining up really, really nicely. So Shuri mid, Hobgoblin right, and then Galactus on six, hopefully. Uh, it would be kind of cool if we had priority. Maybe we put, yeah, Shuri mid helps us probably achieve that a little better. Fortunately, we're stacking the Hobgoblin right. So we, we are at risk of disruption through like arrow or whatever. If we don't have a lead into, which we're not gonna have a lead. Ooh. This is a little worse. Maybe, but I could win priority back here. I mean, I don't, let's see. It's not really worse, right? Cause this is 20 power on the Galactus lane. The Hobgoblin's only 16 power on the Galactus lane. And we want this to go left, right? Because that'll move it mid as well. Okay, let's try this, man. This is the goal for sure. God. <laughs> I hate Leech, dude. <laughs> Leech is the freaking worst. Well, we lose, obviously. Let's try to snipe a win here, but seems incredibly unlikely. If we beat this leech player, dude, like get wrecked. Is that Dr. Doom? Odin Goblin? Oh, that's fine. Ah! Get wrecked, leech player. We don't even need our guards. Uh, no, that makes me happy. That makes me so happy to be a leech player like that. I mean, I'm a leech player too, right? But we, here's the thing about leech, right? <laughs> when you're playing leech, you know that it's awful. You just have to accept it. But when you're playing, when you're playing against Leech, you can trash talk all you want. You get, you get immunity. Trash talk immunity. Hey, Ot Knight, dude, thanks for the prime sub. That's nice. I hope I didn't miss any subs earlier. Sean Og, I might have missed. I don't think so though. I think I said that earlier, right? Mojo World, okay. Not a good spot for Galactus for us. So we can start dumping stuff here, I think. Uh, okay. This is working out all right. Deadpool uh, makes Green Goblin a little bit risky because they're going to be destroying cards. We could go Cosmo though. We have the advantage here. Let's just, let's just screw them, right? Let's snap into Cosmo. <laughs> this is a game I don't really see playing out in a fun way. So let's just abuse the Cosmo advantage here. Maybe they could still have a Killmonger, of course, to get through to this Deadpool, but Hopefully this is really disruptive nonetheless. Oh yeah, Wolverine as well, okay, so. Shuri's awesome, we can put her here. Shuri, we don't have actually the big payoff at the moment. We kind of need... There's the Killmonger, okay. Getting some nice buffs off our Nova, that's cool. Can their Deadpool really get big enough now is the question, right? Oh, dude, it's Nimrod. Oh, dude, we can still top deck Galactus here. Um, he's going to be 12. Is that worth it to play? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Not always, but sometimes. 12 power Nimrod, man. Let's go. Hey, little Cleave thinks the seven months. Wave, but not active. Oh, just the destroyer, dude. That's gotta be the play, right? Well, I see that. It's a little risky, technically. Maybe I actually put it here. Like, putting it here is also pretty reasonable, technically, right? I just hate that I'm not using the Nimrod doubling, snapped. you know? Snap! What's the game plan? Snap for eight. Like, see, if I do this, I preserve four and seven. I preserve 11 power. If I do this, I actually gain 12 power. I, it's more total power, although you risk Mojo World because I only have one card in Mojo World. But you kind of have to imagine they're not going to play Mojo World, right? I think they're going to play an arrow left and expect to win that way. 
And then I just destroy your left and beat the arrow. I think that's what's gonna happen. Oh, I was very wrong. They arrowed mid, but that's also fine. Nimrod wins right, so. Cool. <sighs> really interesting snap. I'm not sure. I mean, this was, I think, again, I think this was the statistically. Well, I don't know. They played two cards, so I did take a little bit of a risk that they could have played two in Mojo World. I guess if Arrow's here, though, I win mid, so maybe it doesn't matter. Because this is big enough to beat these three. Yeah, I guess that was always a win. We added 28 power this final turn, basically. Yeah, do you think a bot? They played into that Cosmo there with a wave and the arrow. I don't know. Either way, happy to see Destroyer being uh, an actual real win condition here. That's nice. Uh, yeah, Ray, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm not the math guy on the rewards stuff. I'm sorry to say that's that's not a strong point for me. Much like in Hearthstone, it never has been. I don't, I don't really pay attention to the really delicate math. I, I bought it. I think a lot of people like the Token Tuesday stuff. Uh, if I remember right, I, I think maybe this week's was one of the better ones as well. But I, again, I. There's a great article on like Marvel Snap Zone or somewhere that breaks down all the math and like kind of does a a value breakdown of all these different uh, all the different reward thingies. Does anybody have a link to that? Maybe. Oh, here it is, right here. It's right on the front page. Here you go. Check out this link. And here I'll pull it up on stream real quick as well, so you can see it real fast uh see this like chart here it breaks down all the bundles for march incredibly useful article it's a, there's a link in chat ray uh, so it, it gives you kind of a progress value they like kind of equalize or normalize all the like progress numbers of like credits and tokens and stuff and so like the green ones are really good right so token tuesday the average value is used. Looks like Token Tuesday is very high value. 3.0 progress value. So, looks like it's pretty good to buy if you're going to buy stuff. Especially if you're close to a token uh, threshold, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, Ocean Man. 100% uh, agreed. All... I, I hate secondary currencies. We just went through this with Hearthstone introducing one finally. They suck. <laughs> it's it, they're just not fun. It's it's there's no ever there's no there's never value to the end user by obfuscating prices and and creating weird uh thresholds and breakpoints of, of prices and stuff. It just it never pays off for the end user. Alright. This is uh no Nimrod, no Galactus, but we got a cool little destroyer hand here, maybe. Destroyers felt good, by the way, guys. I, it's currently been our only win condition, I guess. So, uh, Galactus is not good left and not good mid. Arguably, maybe okay mid, actually, I guess, if we got the right assortment of stuff. But we, we couldn't play, like, a Green Goblin to load it up early or whatever. Uh, Strange Academy... is fine for Galactus. Yeah, that's okay. Squirrel Girl definitely makes me think there's going to be some destroy component here, so the Green Goblin is a little bit risky. But they're going to be going into their final turn with no power in this location, right? Oh, that's good for us. After the Deathlock. Because all these cards are going to move elsewhere. If we're going for the Galactus right. But we need... Because of that, we need to get... Something cool to happen. We need a Nimrod... To come down, because... We're not going to have any power right on turn six at this rate. Beast, the goblin, and the deathlock. What? Okay. Interesting. Nimrod? Shuri Galactus, man. That's that's just not a wing condition, right? Um, we could just go Shuri... Shuri uh, Hobgoblin right, maybe?
I don't know. Shuri Galactus just does not feel like the win. What do you guys think? I don't see it happening. We got to put her here because she won't reveal dimensions. She won't activate on Cosmo. So replay Night Green Goblin. That's fine. Green Goblin mid. Okay, that's that's good. I mean, are they going to be able to play four cards left and beat a 16 power Hobgoblin right? I don't see it, right? Three cards left, I guess, is not impossible because they have a pretty small and cheap assortment of stuff, we think. But will they beat eight power? <laughs> yeah, maybe, right? Actually, yes, maybe. Uh, no Wolverine, no Nimrod. <laughs> it's a five power Galactus enough to win this. There's no way, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Oh, I don't know. They snapped. I, this is a really risky one. We got that eight cube game earlier, though, so I'm gonna go for it. I think. Okay. Hopefully, Hobgoblin's just big enough, right? Oh, they went for the Shang Chi. Yeah, that's funny. We definitely ducked under that. Yeah. That's a good win. Ooh, interesting deck from the opponent. Shang Chi Beast, Bucky Bards, Yandu Deathlock. Maybe some kind of Null thing going on there. A lot of like different destroy type cards. Okay. Oh, you're right. Galactus would have won, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call. Yeah, that's funny to see. Not, not worth the risk, I don't think. But yeah, it would have won. Wild. Would have won five to three. All right, Galactus in hand. Hub is a fine spot for Galactus, so we can play stuff elsewhere. No worries. We just need to hit uh, Nimrods, Wolverines, maybe. Wolverine, cool. Uh, we play Okoye first, so we have a higher chance to hit the Nimrod here. Wolverine is totally fine on three. Nakia, since she's not hitting any other useful card here, probably worse than Wolverine. She's worth two power on the Galactus. Wolverine's worth four power on the Galactus lane. And we can play her later anyway, I guess, too, right? So this is fine. Um... Wrong order though. Okay. Do we ever want to go right since they have no cards there? Green Goblin is a downside with Okoye, guys. We didn't consider, and is ho as is Hobgoblin. I think it's probably a worthwhile trade-off, but but definitely a consideration we didn't really talk about much. Um. They're so locked up on power here. I, th I think we still want to go left, right? Just to prevent them from adding a significant amount of power. Oh, Electro. Okay. So they may also be playing for Galactus here, which uh, is kind of okay for us, right? We're, we're chill with that. Uh, we're revealing first. So Shuri here is good. We could actually just go Shuri Destroyer since we'll be revealing... Well, they may play the Galactus mid. And then they would be revealing a last, which would give them some interesting priority. Um, Because they'll want to play that here. So Shang-Chi loses us the game in this case. Um, yeah, I don't know. This doesn't feel good. Hobgoblin would, would really be the, the play next turn, maybe, to dodge a Shang-Chi. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, if Wolverine doubled, he'd be pretty insane, I think, yeah. Hey, uh, Drunk Priest with the two months, Nick Bob with the prime sub, and Tremudis with the 100 bits, everyone playing Nimrod and donating me four cubes at a time for some reason. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh, no, uh... No Galactus. Okay, interesting. Man, do we ever go for Destroyer now, then? There's no way, right? Galactus is four power. Because the problem with Destroyer is we only win one lane because of Wolverine. Omega Red mid is kind of a neat idea, but it's still not very good. Oh, 
I don't know, man. I just destroyer's just not very good. Wolverine's only five. That has a chance to win a location, but a pretty slim one. Destroyer is overkill at thirty to win this, but you know his, he's he's too isolated. This is what a uh, four and five a nine power play right. <laughs> 10 power maybe, right? 10 power? Is reach going to be 5? This this is not impossible, man. Something like an arrow would screw me. Their own Galactus mid would... Uh... Well, I guess that'd be fine. Kang. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. Uh, they didn't take their free Kang snap, huh? Now we have this question of whether or not we we pivot. Did I do the Wolverine Nova backwards? I thought I did it right. Nova dies first, I thought, and then Wolverine gets buffed. I guess it's kind of irrelevant though. Am I insane? I guess it, Wolverine comes back anyway, so I guess it doesn't actually matter, right? Are they destroyed simultaneously and don't count, I guess? I did it right? They have to be in different locations. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what it is. They die simultaneously. <sighs> okay, for two cubes, I'm gonna do it again, right? I'm gonna do it again. I think they're gonna wanna play their own Galactus, but they just lose it, right? Oh no! No! Only two cubes, worth the risk, I say. <laughs> worth the fun. Nova also didn't work for him with Galactus. Hmm. Galactus got buffed to five, right? But Wolverine didn't? I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, it could be a big deal, but... All right. I'll never expect you to do it twice. Who said that? You're gone. You're banned. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, an actual Nimrod enhance. Yeah, he does look good in purple, by the way. That's pretty sick. Is this the same guy? Are they uh, fist bumping me for that or some other reason? I don't know. Well, this is definitely not our Galactus lane. So we can load up here. Green Goblin left is honestly pretty cool. They're going to be a little stuck there, I bet. Feel a little stuck. So this is this is perhaps better. Although, man, I may have screwed myself. This may not be a Galactus lane. Uh oh. Might have taken a risk here. I could have saved that for Galactus. Wolverine can kind of go anywhere, right? Oh, that's fine. Okay, saved. Saved, but probably wrong. Ooh, Naki and Nimrod's not bad. Well, if we're gonna play this as our Galactus lane, really, we do want Green Goblin here, I guess. I, I, need, I need to stop being silly. <laughs> so I wanted to lock up left, but we don't care. We're trying to play for a potential Galactus, right? We may not hit him. In that case, life gets a little more I interesting, but... Uh, at least for now, that's the plan. So Nakia Hobgoblin's bad, but Nakia Nimrod's good. Um, let's see, we hit a Destroyer. Are we going to be happy? Mm, I kind of doubt it, really. It is 214 power Nimrod, so it's not crazy bad, but... I think we really want we really want Galactus, right? Putting a lot of value mid as well, which is good for us currently. Atlantis, that's fine. Would have been great last turn for this Nimrod. Why did I say 14 power? It's not doubling, bro. I don't know why I said that. Well, it is 14 power if we hit Galactus. Not for Destroyer, though. Seven power for Destroyer. I was getting Shuri on my brain. It's not shuri bro. It's Nakiad. <laughs> So top deck Galactus here is, is really the, the goal. Um, uh, we still do technically beat that, right? We have a four and, and, and uh, okay, now 16 and, and five and two. Yeah, we would still beat this. <gasps> oh. We go for it, right? We go for it. We try. I'm not confident enough to snap, but we go for it. Do they read it? Kang again? Yeah, Kang's gonna ruin the stack, isn't it? <laughs> Arrow, uh... 
Arrow could happen too, of course. As always. Oh, we're revealing first for Arrow though. No, we're fine for Arrow. Arrow's not a problem. That's why it's nice to actually be able to play the turn six Galactus and have some priority, right? This has to be a win, doesn't it? Seems insane. Close, but yeah, we're big enough, man. That is actually sick, guys. I, I really like the turn six Galactus, man. I feel like they weren't expecting it, right? They may have had an arrow out there. I guess technically, well, wait, had, had enough stuff been destroyed? How cheap was this death? Wasn't really paying attention. They had some ramp, maybe. They didn't really destroy it. Oh, Killmonger destroyed some stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was pretty cheap. That was perfect, man. Perfect game. Chill, surprise 23 power, right? Imagine if this was Shuried as well, dude. And, and see, like I said, the cool thing about this is too, like normally when you're playing Galactus and you're playing Electro and you're playing Wave and you're playing from behind all of these cards that are about ramping, right? You have two problems. You have, you have a lack of priority when you play Galactus, which opens you up to Arrows, Cosmos, those kinds of disruptive sort of plays that, that put Galactus in the wrong spot or counter him in some way, which sucks. And you also, you, you, you give your opponent such an obvious tell. You say, hey, this is a Galactus deck, you know, be ready. And they're ready. And then they just save cards or whatever. You know, they try to have answers or they just retreat because they know they don't have it. I think this kind of build, I mean, obviously if this becomes popular enough, it might still sell Galactus a little bit, right? But it, it certainly leaves a little more up to question and you can also pivot with Destroyer. So, you know, it, it's got more surprise and flexibility built in, which has always been one of my biggest hangups when playing Galactus is that I feel like, especially at, at, at higher ranks, I'm not gonna call myself high MMR because I don't think I am, but higher ranks, uh, Galactus always felt like it was just such an obvious counter and, and so easily countered. And this might be a little bit harder for people to kind of work around that sometimes, at least in the short term. Uh, Simpson Lasers, thanks for the uh, 55 months, dude. Shuri Nimrod Zola deck. That's what we're going to do next. Uh, see you, Trimudius, man. Thanks again for the bits earlier. I hope I didn't miss any, did I? No, I got him. Okay. Thanks, Trimudius. How are we going, dude? Uh, Leviticus and Rotaz, thanks to the Prime subs as well, folks. Oh, this hand is spicy. All right, we need uh, Shuri, really, to have the dream hand here. Oh! Oh, oh my God! Uh, where does Galactus want to go? He can go... Uh... We actually don't really want to play other cards on our Galactus. We don't even really want to play Galactus on five, either, for the record, right? So... It's going to be the final turn. It doesn't really matter. Elysium's going to be active to them. Let's just make it Lemuria because that's easy. I think they're more likely to put a card here, which means we're going to lock up their their power distribution a little faster. Uh, we want to put Nimrod mid in this case still, right? Oh, Sauron. Yeah, that's small. Does mean they have potentially a pretty big card. Definitely don't want them to have DC open. I know that. Hobgoblin here hopefully really locks them down. And then we Nimrod mid on five that gives them a little more flexibility interestingly they don't play another card here do they i don't think they do on turn four it's too early it's too early to play another card here there's no way they can't it's not acceptable um you know we could actually galactus on five now too again it, it does show them our hand a little bit better because they can maybe play off this sunspot but I think we can just map this out, right? Sunspot Max here is able to gain 11 power, which, uh, well, on that argument, I guess, again, we don't really need to, right? We can just do Galactus Nimrod and be fine. Because even if they just pass pass, they're going to exactly six power. Does this risk any disruption? It does risk an arrow, but that could also come right now. I guess on that argument, we should do it now because I can make a better play next turn in case of an arrow, right? 
Let's not. I think you should snap here, but I'm not going to snap because I want to see the game end. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So now we don't have to worry about Arrow. And now we can just play Destroyer for the win. Cool. I, I think I think this plays right to get around the final turn Arrow. Although, I mean, I, I, Arrow is weird for them because they don't have a losing spot, but it just risks the Galactus, right? They could still just play it for a body and, and to make sure there's no Galactus risk. Okay, cool. Make your opponent retreat. We did indeed. This deck feels good, by the way, guys. We're we're doing great so far. Really strong start, man. Some good games too. Uh, we are uh, yeah, we're five and one so far, and we're up fifteen cubes. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It would be better for YouTube to do the combo, but I made the better play. We're ranking up, so I'm going to try to trend towards better plays a little bit. Uh, not always. I won't promise that always, but a little bit maybe. This is actually a fine spot for Galactus later, so we can put our other cards uh, other cards mid. <gasps> okay. I mean, we do have a great setup for this, honestly. Green Goblin on three. Hobgoblin on five might be risky, but we'll see. Because, well, I don't know. I guess if they, if they lock up on five, we could just destroy away our Hobgoblin. So it's not actually that much risk. I think we'll probably still go Hobgoblin on five, right? Oh, <laughs> dang it. Um... Misty Knight. Like, I think they're gonna play like an Ultron later. That's 13 power. I'm trying to figure out if I can get enough power, right? Uh, like, I can't Shuri, so I don't think I can get enough power. My max power is gonna be 15 plus 2 is 17. I'm gonna go up to I'm gonna go up to 15. I, I think they're gonna easily get to 15 because they have three turns basically to add only 10 power. I think that's that's a Wolverine and destroy destroy how man <laughs> there's, there's there happens to be a problem um oh yeah that's that's not even a sure well I don't have a sure I'm just saying if we if we hit a sure next turn there's no there's no outs right yeah Cosmo pretty much owns that Escaped. good play by them not sure they were expecting the Green Goblin so much as just trying to lock it down, but good to lock it down early. Smart to get ahead of it, you know? All right. Need of Lears, um, actually not, if, if our game plan plays out the way we want, actually not terrible for our Galactus, honestly. Normally it would be, but you know, if we had, if we had two Nimrods and a Wolverine, we would fully realize the buffs and our opponent might not. So could be okay, but it depends on the, depends on the draw. For now, uh, if we get a good Galactus card, if we get a good Galactus lane, lane mid, I think we'll play Okoye left. And then Naki is pretty legit on three here. Both Galactus and Wolverine getting buffed is pretty cool. I gotta, yeah, I gotta play around World Ship into Cosmo. That's a tough one. <laughs> Is this a Galactus location? Mm. Oh, again, dude, it's actually pretty okay given the um, given the hand here, man. This is not bad. I play a Koye on two. We can play Wolverine on three. The Koye here actually does nothing really because we, well, you know what? We uh, we ought to play. Well, I don't know. I want the Nakia to hit Galactus and Nimrod, right? But if I hit a Shuri, that's way better. And if I hit a Shuri, I need to play the Wolverine now if I also want to play the Nakia. I don't know. I can do this on curve, though, and still hit the Wolverine is the thing. Like, maybe we just play for the curve. You don't have to hit the Nimrod here, right? It's okay. Nakia Nimrod's not mandatory. It's a little, little more power if I could manage to hit the, the Nimrod, but... Oh, wow. The opponent ruined my perfect hand. No, 
<laughs> no, Seawolf, what on earth was... What, what, how did they have enough information to know that they were losing? I hadn't played a single card. Hey, Minot VTuber dude. Uh, thanks for watching on YouTube, man. That's nice. Appreciate it. Oh, bar sinister Shuri, dude. We could just go for the Shuri Galactus and that's it. Green Goblin is like a free win on bar sinisters. The thing though, it's like, do I want to go for the memes or just the freebie? Uh, the, the real thing is I don't actually have a Galactus right now too, right? So it's a little risky to go for a Shuri Galactus. Uh, Morbius, okay. Also kind of risking the Galactus by playing this here. I could play it right. This could be a fine Galactus lane. Oh, dude. Dude, I want to do it so bad. <laughs> I want a Galactus so bad. Oh my god. What are my chances of hitting it? I have uh, turns 4, 5, and 6 to draw it. So it's a 50-50. Listen, guys. I don't care. I'm going to do it, okay? I'm going to do it. Goblin and Shuri, I, mean, I, I lose a... Sh I, I, I keep one Goblin, right? So I lose a Shuri, but I, I guess there's an argument that's okay, right? Three Shuris is still pretty insane. Well, not really, though, because you go to 4, 8, 16. I don't know if 16 is enough to win Throne Room reliably. I also think it's going to make them concede. I'm not going to do it. I don't want them to concede. I'm playing for memes. Oh! <laughs> we got lucky i guess we were revealing first though but still a little oh no moon knight is oh <laughs> not lucky not so lucky shoot <laughs> it all fell apart, dude. Uh, is there any sequence of draws like Nimrod into Galactus? Like Nimrod here, Galactus here. There's no way without a Shuri activating, right? It's just not possible. Dang it, dude. Dang it. Escape. If we played the Green Goblin, we still would have been a little bit in trouble, I think. I think we end up with two Green Goblins and they end up with... Is that how it works? You still end up with one? I can't remember how it works. It's funky with the green goblins. You always end up with one at the end, but I think if they have a card, you might end up with two? I don't remember. You might still end up with one, but I don't recall. We all knew those rules when, when Bar Sinister was the hot location or whatever, but since then I forgot, as I'm sure many of us have. Okay, this is an interesting destroyer hand. Um, that's risky for Galactus. New York is actually fine for Galactus. We can have that work. So we can Green Goblin left. We know they're pretty locked up already on spots. It's the person we played earlier with the Cosmo, right? They played the Misty Knight early? Surely they don't play the Cosmo and Green... <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> they don't do it again, right? <laughs> Come on. There's no way, right? There's no way they play the Cosmo here. No. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, actually, really fine, because left is where we wanted to go anyway. So completely fine. Oh, that's good news. Okay. Um, this doesn't really matter much, right? I need a place to play a potential Wolverine or Nimrod. Wolverine can go here, Nimrod can go mid. I wonder if there's any logic to that. They're more likely to play here. So let's me hobgoblin. I don't know if we can risk the hobgoblin on five because if it backfires, we just straight up lose, right? Cosmo mid would allow me a, a destroyer pivot, but I don't think that ever wins the game anyway. So that doesn't seem worth it. If we hit Nimrod, we'll go for that. I think that's a little safer than the hobgoblin here. If we go... Yeah, without the Nimrod, I... Oh, boy. You want to do this, but... Boy. 
They're not expecting a hobgoblin, are they? Boy. Boy. I mean, Naki is just not good enough, right? Uh, we only have Nova. There's no Wolverine or Nimrod. So this this doesn't win the game. Destroyer doesn't win the game. We, we kind of have to. If we want to win the game, this is the only way to do it. So this if they if they hit it here, it's kind of the same as us just playing in Akia because it loses both lose. So we have to just try to play for the win here. Seems like it might have worked. Nice. Very cool. All right. They're revealing first. Does anything mess this up in any way? Like any, you know, like destroy a Nova, but it's not enough power. No, I don't think it does. I guess an arrow always, but you know, that that's kind of a given. <laughs> arrow always messes up everything. We can't, we can't play around arrows too hard. This doesn't seem like an arrow deck, right? Okay. Yeah, this is like an OG Galactus victory, dude. <laughs> it's old school. Just gobbling your way through it, man. Victory. We got lucky on that debris, honestly. That could have really screwed us. You know, I will say again, though, were they actually expecting the Galactus here, I wonder? Did our deck signal Galactus to them or not? Because if not, you know, that's... Oh, here we get our stuff. Nice, dude. No arrow and Patriot decks. Your, your confidence is too high. I promise you. <laughs> Arrows in every deck. <laughs> As I said, I agree. It's not likely, but you can't be 100% confident. Uh, dude, this skin is crazy. I saw this from like a data mine or something. It is a crazy looking skin. I don't like his fingers. His fingers are like two up in my face. Look weird to me. Weird fingered dude. Oh, that is beautiful. Whew. I want that. I don't use it, but I want it. All right. Dude, I got so many credits. Is 10K the cap? I need to, uh... Guys, remind me how this works. You guys will know this better than me because again, this is one of those things I absolutely don't pay attention to. So they're they're adding a new variant rush um, uh, event on the 21st of March. So you you have a limited time to get all these extra variants. So I was just gonna save all my stuff for then because I I obviously have enough tokens and, and credits or whatever. I have all the cards and now like a 12k a buffer for cards and we don't even buy one this week. So I'm gonna have like a 15k buffer. So do I need to save my reserves for then or do I just need to save credits for then? Uh, save your reserves for the rush, says one person. The other person says, I think reserves are determined when you get them. So we've got... We've, all, we've already got disagreeing information, which I, I don't know the answer either. That's why I'm asking. I don't remember. I remember hearing a lot of arguments about this in the past and never knew. Reserves are absolutely not determined when you get them. They're determined when you open them. I can hoard them. Okay. I'll probably just hoard then since I have no reason to, to open them. Save the reserves, all right. I'll save the credits as well in that case because otherwise I'm gonna keep hitting the, the thing. But I, I guess what we're saying is I can upgrade some cards, right? Otherwise I would wanna be saving like 10K credits to the last minute. But if, I, if, 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 the, if the reserves can be hoarded, then I don't need to save credits. I can just save boxes, right? Should I trust you guys with this information? How confident are you, chat? Are you like fully confident or like sort of confident? <laughs> Some of you are really confident, but uh, I've been, I have been uh, misled by overconfidence in the past. So I'm a little hesitant here. You can save reserves, okay. I will do that. If they decide to change it when they patch it, then nothing is lost anyway, so that's no different. 
I guess that argument kind of stands either way, right? I guess technically if if they do change it, I don't lose anything anyway because I don't need the cards. So I, I guess in any case, I'm always better waiting. If we think about it. Ooh. Ooh! That's a shiny. I think they believe the variant rush. I think the variant rush starts on March 21st. I'm actually going to be out of town a little bit on the, uh, I don't know, the weekend of the 18th. I think I'm going to miss the Negasonic Teenage Warhead release, for instance. At least I think I get home the day it comes out. But, uh, I'll be back in time for that. Killmonger's pretty crazy. Is that what he looks like in the comics? Like, I don't, th that like face mask thing. I don't, that's not in any of the other art that I recall. That's a Galactus skin and you aren't even using it. Here, I'll put on some skins for you guys. I always forget. I just like the base art so much. And I, <laughs> I just, I like, you know, I don't like the backgrounds usually much. I, I like the gold backgrounds pretty well, but those always, you know, take a long time to get. I don't have that many, so. The mask is from the movie? Is it really? I've seen the movie, but I don't remember very well. I think I fell asleep for like a little bit of Black Panther. Is that what they like steal from the museum or something maybe? That kind of sounds familiar. I haven't seen the second Black Panther yet. Ooh, that was a gold armor speaking of golds, dude. Hold up. Oh, that actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, oh, the black uh, flare too looks cool. Looks like, uh, almost looks like like flies or something, like bugs emanating there. That's pretty sweet. All right, I spent some of those. Let's, uh, I'm not gonna go all the way through. Let's, uh, let's do skins for you guys. You guys wanna see skins, you said, right? That'll be fine for the end of the video. Uh, Golden Nova. I don't really like the flare on that one too much though. Hey, Zeus, dude. Oh my God, five gifted subs out of nowhere. I don't like that flare much either though. Maybe we go here. I don't like that flare either. Oh, that one looks pretty cool. Okay. Zeus, scratch to Aurelian, Dexterathon, Small Chief, Walbo, and Bumblebean. Dude, that's awesome, thank you. Oh, that is a sick variant, okay. Scorpion, that one looks pretty good. Wolverine only have his pixel. Nah, I don't want that. I, I kind of want them all to be infinity border at least, right? Uh, Nakia, oh, that one's cool. Doesn't really match the deck, but pretty cool. Green Goblin, I don't have anything, seriously? Cosmo have a bunch, I know. We'll do this one. Tree, I think, yeah, I only have pixel. I've got one. I don't remember having anything. Yeah, why don't I have any goblin variants? What's the deal, man? Oh, uh, this one's not infinity bordered, but it looks amazing in the orange. So we'll take it. We'll have destroyer and galactus in orange. That looks pretty cool. I did see the meme Wolverine variant. Yeah, it's really funny. Really, really funny. Guys, did they add the new um, bonus cubes yet, by the way? We, they, uh, some of you may not have even heard this yet, but in the notes today, they, they mentioned they're adding uh, bonus cubes. Uh, when you now hit a new rank floor, so like when you go from, you know, 69 to, to 70, you used to go to 71. Now you're going to go to 75. You're going to get an extra five or well, an extra four, but a total of five uh, thingies. So interestingly with Weird World, we do have a couple Galactus cards, but is it ever enough, right? It doesn't seem like it. Probably wanna play this straight up instead of going for for Galactus, unless the opponent happens to have like, you know, a wave or something perfect, who knows? Chongji, okay, interesting. That's uh, promising. Looks pretty cool. Crimson, oh, Devil Dinosaur, okay. So a dino deck with White Queen, is that? Oh, that's, is this from their deck? Just don't say, huh? Ah, there's my Green Goblin. Okay, so Galactus plan is definitely out, we know that. 
Um, probably try to win Cosmos and Lemuria here then. We know they don't have a Galactus, which is good news. They do have a Shuri, but that makes Shang-Chi awfully spicy usually. Ah, the Darkhawk. Okay, so they have that in hand. Um, we're probably off going better, better off going Devil Dino here. I think we actually flip this. It'll be big enough. Korg is going to be worth more than the Dino. They might have a Destroyer, a Nimrod. Moon Girl. Oh, that's too small for Shang-Chi, bro. Three cards in deck, so Dark Hawk, not very big. Dang, dude, they wrecked my Shang-Chi! I don't think Colson's gonna be worth far more power in this case, right? Do they try to flip tin? They can't really, right? Because, well, at least, let's see, how many of their actual cards have they played? Moon Girl only? So they have two more of their cards. They didn't skip a turn for any sort of like She Hulk stuff. They don't. Oh, they do have a Dark Hawk, we know, but it's not big. It's eight power. I'm adding eight mid. That put me at 11 mid. Dark Hawk plus like a two drop or something good. I am putting a Korg, so the Dark Hawk's a little bigger, but is that better than. The, the Coulson makes the dino bigger, right? So I don't think so. I think this is fine. It's at least worth a shot anyway. Oh, they put two mid. That's what I was worried about. That seems like the biggest risk here. <sighs> Dark Hawk and Scorpion's too small. Okay, cool. Just big enough. Wow. All right. Victory. Cool. Good stuff. Hey, no, 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 nouveau punk, dude. Thanks for the prime sub. You guys are rolling a ton of subs in. Gifted subs from Zeus. You guys are being awesome tonight. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, so basically climbing is going to be almost like twice as fast, really, if you're climbing a lot of ranked floors. I guess everybody's generally climbing three ranked floors, but you know, people could climb more now, but for, if they're starting from a lower number. Um, I was gonna ask, uh, but did they did they turn that on already? Ha they announced it today, but has it been turned on? Like if I hit 80 today, am I gonna go to 81 or am I gonna go to 85? Not that I think that's gonna happen today, but just, just out of curiosity. This is a decent uh, Galactus lane. Could be a little bit risky if the opponent happens to be a Patriot deck or something, but generally speaking, should be okay. Oh, that made my goblins so much worse. Could still could use them with Cosmo, though. Well, we don't have to hurry on the Galactus here, but honestly, Shuri Galactus now is a pretty good play, too. Um, just chill 12 power, right? That's pretty fun. Ant Man, okay. Cosmo me? Cosmo me? Cosmo me? <sighs> Nakia as well on the Galactus, dude. That's actually pretty sick. <laughs> um, it's now a 16 power Galactus. <clears throat> okay. I like it. <laughs> Am I really? Oh! Cosmo, he ruins the Nakia, but he makes the Hobgoblin and Green Goblin so much better. My own Cosmo as well. Um, if these Hobgoblins are good enough, like we have to make a decision, like are we actually playing for Galactus or not? Cold Power Galactus is still a pretty cool idea, I think. I like him right as well. So I, also, do I play the Shuri now because we're a turn off? It would be really cool for a Nimrod. So maybe I do. We could also actually play a Destroyer too. 30 power Destroyer, but that would ruin the Galactus plan a little bit. 
I mean, we can skip a turn if we need to, but if we hit the Nimrod, this is a little bit better. We just have to decide oh, yeah. if we if we oh, think yeah. a, si a 12 power Galactus is enough to win. Not 16 anymore, 12. Is a 12 power Galactus enough to win? <gasps> I'm a genius. So now we're looking at a 16 power Galactus line um, with Nova actually a little more. I feel pretty good about that, right? We want the space for the Nimrod here. Oh no, these are 20, no, 20. No, never mind. No, 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 no. Shuri makes these 10 each. 20, 26 plus, I don't know, 28 or something. Nova's hitting one of these Nimrods, I think. Spectrum's fine. Oh, we're totally chill. This is GG, right? I'm not gonna snap. It's too late and I wanna see the end of this game. This has to be game though, right? Any reason for me to play a card alongside this? I don't want to put one here because that ruins the Nimrod. They're revealing first, so arrow here would technically be a risk, but this doesn't stop it anyway. Uh, I don't think this has any, any downside though, right? Can I show their Iron Man? Yeah, sure. I think this is fine. Less power if you play a card. Why is it less power? Yeah, this doesn't stop arrow. They reveal first, but... Two cards left for arrow? Oh, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, actually, that's pretty smart. To stop an arrow left, because the, the arrow right would be fine. Two cards left is actually the answer. That's, that's really heads up. Oh! Geniuses, dude. Actually, geniuses. Chat, you guys are geniuses. I love it. Two cards arrow denial, dude. That's beautiful. Actually, actually 500 IQ, yeah. That's great. Also, just a great win here. Cool. The peak saved us. That wouldn't have been possible without the peak. We lose that uh, without the peak because we don't have energy to do all that. Cool. Interesting deck. Arrow, uh, like, ongoing. Spectrum. Pretty crazy. Feels good, man, indeed. Zers, thanks again for the gift and subs, by the way, Zers. Necrotia, not, I guess, the ideal Galactus location. I mean, theoretically, though, it could be if we hobgoblin our way over there. You know, sure, we hobgoblin Necrotia is pretty brutal. Uh, let's, let's, let's do this. It's fine. Necrotia is definitely an option, if nothing else. It's fine. Daily Beagle gave us some info here. Thankfully, the opponent's Breaking not going to see a Galactus. That's good news. Uh, Naki on three, Shuri on four. So we won't have time to Wolverine if we don't play it now. Let's just play it now. Naki is bad for the Hobgoblin now, though, so we got to think about that. Wong Shuri could just be a really cool play. Um, Galactus, though, not not great for that he goes to to four and then eight he's just not that big right you need a little more i think yeah since since naki is bad we'll just go okoye here let's leave mirror dimension open for now just in case we will probably always put shuri in in mirror dimension though uh because we want to have room for a, a potential nimrod currently we don't have galactus at all so this is all kind of hopeful but you know it's the plan anyway. Ah, they have their own Electro. Necro oh, there's our Galactus, nice. So now it's just straight up. It's just luck. If they're playing their own Galactus, where they're gonna go. Nimrod here would still be a good top deck, I think. They're not playing it this turn, it's next turn, because we're on four, but uh, we gotta think about that. We might be revealing first though, too. We actually have a chance, although Shuri's gonna go to zero, so I guess not really that likely. But anyway, the Hobgoblin, if we try to snipe, right, that's, that's what we're gonna have to do. I guess they're gonna put, if, if they Galactus on five and have priority, they're gonna put the Galactus right, because they know the Shuri's already locking up a spot. So we would Hobgoblin right in that case, but then I couldn't Galactus if they didn't, right? That's the only downside. 
I don't have a way to Galactus if if I send the Hobgoblin there. So am I better off sending it here so that I can manage my own Galactus? Are they playing Galactus right? We have so many questions here. I don't know. They don't have it, I guess. They're giving up. They didn't hit the Galactus on time, I think, so they said screw it. We did have priority, so we could stop a Galactus. Could maybe have tried to win that one organically too if we hit like a destroyer or something, but might have been tough. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Shouldn't the Galactus be right? Um, it, the, you can still manipulate the Nimrods. Like as long as you put the first Nimrod left, it doesn't really matter. So like you can have Galactus anywhere and just have the Nimrods you know, you you want you want the Nimrod to be in the location of the of the two getting destroyed. You want the base Nimrod and the left one, but Galactus can go anywhere and still achieve that goal, right? So you can have Galactus here and a Nimrod here. You can have Galactus here and a Nimrod here. You can have Galactus here and a Nimrod here. Does that make sense? If you put Galactus left while Nimrod is on the right, you only get one Nimrod. Correct, but you can put Nimrod mid. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's that's why you heard me talking about leaving a space open mid. I said, hey, we need to leave a space here for a Nimrod. So there's there's always a way. So so no matter where Galactus is, there's always one location that's getting destroyed first. Does that does that make sense? Um Let's start loading up for a potential Galactus lane here. I mean, we could just keep playing Scorpions like a jerk. <laughs> I mean, it kind of does the same thing as the Green Goblin in a weird way. Uh... Dreams lagging a bit? Sorry, guys. I, I don't know. Aeronautics, is, th is that making sense, man? Or are you... I don't know. Green Goblin might be better, but Scorpion's funnier. I know how demoralizing this can feel to people sometimes. Uh, all right, so Shuri here, Nimrod mid. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. For the reason we just described, we want Nimrod left. Galactus right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. We might go Hobgoblin too, though. We think that's a better way to win. We'll see. Do we trust the top deck Galactus? It's a one out of four. It's also good with a top deck uh, destroyer, I guess, too. So it's kind of a 50-50 here. It's not like this is a terrible play in its own right either to the Jubilee's negative. I love it. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, yeah, it didn't hit either, man. It's kind of hard to trust just a Nimrod here, you know? The opponent has to be thinking uh, shenanigans, but is 10 power enough to win? I mean, it's not not enough because we know we've debuffed their hand a lot. Even something like a Magneto would be a real risk for them. Four cubes is a lot, though, for missing our win condition. Can we really play out four cubes missing our win condition? <sighs> that seems risky to me, right? I mean, do we even put it mid here, by the way, just to, just to swing? They're not going to add cards mid, right? They're adding cards. They're going elsewhere. But they might be expecting the 10 power Nimrod to flip here. They could add something small here. I mean, a retreat is definitely the safest bet, but I, I kind of want to see this out. The scorpions are giving me a little bit of false hope here. Oh, he's 11. Oh, but the Shuri. Yes. <laughs> the scorpion hope, dude. He only got hit by one scorpion. I said even Magneto's 10, but the Shuri pull saves it, dude. That was the only pull, so actually just fine. Surprised they went for that given they knew I had the Nimrod in hand. And that was a losing line to that Nimrod. 
I guess if the Nimrod went mid, I still won, right? Because I had nine, I think. Yeah, the negative one plus or eight, eight. Yeah, I don't know. That did lose to the only piece of information that they had. So I'm surprised they stuck that out. Uh, Dan B3, dude, thanks for the 13 months. That's awesome. Welcome, welcome. Oh, okay. Kind of a neat hand here, but negative zone, not ideal. Uh, so can, can definitely put like Nimrods and stuff there. That's fine. Uh, Galactus mid actually should be okay. Technically a little risky because Nimrods may not be the biggest cards there. But I want to play this Okoye. I guess I could put her left. It doesn't hurt anything, right? And then maybe Nakia right or mid, depending on which of these is the better Galactus lane. Because this, this is not a permanent debuff, so it's okay. I do lose priority if I go here, probably, which is a little bit bad potentially for arrow disruption, but... <clears throat> we'll, we'll see. That does read a deck that could have an arrow for sure. Oh. <laughs> uh, interesting. We're going to go Shuri Nimrod, so... Uh, I, I can do this, but man, if I hit Galactus, I am giga sad i think maybe maybe not that sad shuri is still pretty cool hobgoblin's still pretty cool i mean he's negative six he's not as cool but oh they like that uh oh i mean do we ever put galactus here because i i do potentially get the nimrods and stuff right we just play the galactus here there's no no risks other than destroyer i don't know how that order works does destroyer destroy the nimrods in that case i don't know this this is a weird this changes a lot of our our, our numbers and thoughts here i'm not sure how to how to play this out they got a sunspot and a red skull oh my don't get galactus don't get galactus don't get galactus don't get galactus okay that's fine so now, now we have to organically draw Galactus or play for Destroyer actually could be good too. Uh, but Shuri Nimrod left is nice. Thoughts on Nimrod? I mean, I, dude, I don't know. This deck is working pretty well so far. It's not always Nimrod that's doing it, but we're, uh, we're at an, uh, <laughs> dude, the, these stats are insane. Are you kidding me? I just, dude. Oh! Okay, so now we're going to be going for a destroyer line. We just have to decide where that's happening. I guess I needed to play a destroyer left in that case. I'm going to get a 14 power Nimrod here that puts me at, at uh, uh, 16 and 4 is 20. Doesn't always beat a sunspot. Destroyer can't go mid in that case. I don't want to play the destroyer right because the quantum tunnels. So I have to play it left if I actually want to destroy the Nimrods, right? Can't play the Nimrod there. I mean, this Nimrod locationing doesn't really matter, I guess. Well, I want it to go mid. No, it does matter because I want it to go mid, right? No, I need to play it here and then destroyer here. Yeah, that that's the move. Oh, I'm losing the Nova though. He's only worth one. He gets destroyed. I don't have a Nova. I don't beat Red Skull here. So the goal here would be to try to win mid and left, but I, I don't know, man. That seems hard. Yeah, that seems impossible actually. Like this doesn't win, right? It's 14. 14 here, but I mean, the Red Skull buffs it a little. By the way, what, what's up with this three power Taskmaster? I guess that came off the Quantum Tunnel, huh? It's <laughs> like, how did this land there? Nova goes away. This goes to, uh, this goes to, it's, it's 15. Here it goes to 17 and 15 here. 15 here doesn't win. 17 mid, right? Um, I don't think so, right? They go to 16 mid? Oh, true. They go to 16 mid because they're losing the, the highest from the monster metropolis. 
they don't play mid i mean it's not impossible i'm really worried about arrow in particular though they might play arrow here though because they're winning here yeah you know, yeah they go to 13 mid both of these lose this is actually winnable if they arrow left in particular let's see arrow right that is not as winnable does this stick though it stays right oh the nova stayed too it's the armor's back <laughs> that wasn't the plan but we take it i mean the the, the nova actually wasn't even necessary because the destroyer sticks because of the the arrow I thought they might arrow here and we'd be fine, but arrow here is fine too. Let's freaking go, dude. That was beautiful. Dude, oh, I was gonna show you guys. This stack, <laughs> look at these stats so far. Look, look at this. We're 11 and three. Okay, that's insane, number one. Almost an 80% win rate, but more importantly, we're averaging two cubes a game. Almost. That is an insane cube rate. Usually the best decks have about a 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Occasionally I've seen some 0.7 cube rates. 0.2 cube or 2.0 almost cube rate. This is insane. Like, if you look at the best cube rate decks with data, um, right, uh, uh, seems to be, so 0.8 is literally one of the best cube rate decks in the game, according to this data. This is almost a two so far. It's crazy. We did play one leech deck. We have destroyer. We, we lost against the leech deck. That was one of our losses, if I recall. No, we beat it anyway, I think. It, it ruined our wickedness, but we won anyway just on power. Uh, but but uh, Destroyer is actually a pretty good hedge against uh, leech decks, right? Go ahead and silence my Destroyer. I'm happy kind of thing. Guys, I'm going to take a pee break. I'll be right back. Um, honestly, I, I think I almost have enough games of this deck for YouTube. Um, we may switch it up to a different, like an Arnim Zola build. But, but uh, I don't know. I'm having fun, so we'll see. Hey, everybody. I'm back. Boop, boop, boo. Do I prefer a new title or avatar? Neither. <laughs> Literally anything else. All right. Uh, Nova setting up our Galactus is cool. Uh, Yondu eating green goblins. Fine. Might signal a little bit what our game plan is, but still, I think, okay. Ooh, quantum tunnel. Not ideal for the... Uh, you know, with the Galactus and Hail, I think we just go like Nova, Nova, Wolverine, Wolverine, right? Hopefully Galactus can go right safely. I mean, it's not terrible with Quantum Tunnel, I guess. It's fine, I suppose. Um, I guess we're better off doing it like... Oh, I can't play... My stuff here. Um, I can't really play Wolverine here is the problem. Shoot. Play it here, I have some risks. I mean, Galactus can go here. That's not an issue. What am I doing next turn? Do I, do I play for a Nimrod? He'll be in the wrong spot if he's on Quantum Tunnel. This, the, if I play here, I lose my ability to get two Nimrods if I draw it in the next couple turns. Um... Destroyer here also kind of wastes the Novas a little bit for the Galactus. A Shuri would be cool. I could just send over a Hobgoblin. Cosmo is just nothing. That's fine. Maybe I get the Wolverine back. I don't know, man. This feels weird. Oh, Electro and Yondus. This reads Galactus to me as well. Uh, Wolverine. Oh, man. Lucky you, dude. Destroyer. That's the one I didn't want. Dang it! He's pointless! So one bad roll there. Now I, now I feel like I gotta start over, dang it. Uh, okay, this is fine though.
they're they, they played an electro right so they cannot collect us this turn but they might be able to next turn but if i have priority we might be able to uh, hobgoblin if we're winning a tie thanks to this destroyer we might be able to hobgoblin right and deny their galactus so we'll see am i winning priority i think i often am on a tie pretty much always shuri gone that's fine am i ever oh their gnoll's gone okay so this is the turn they want to play galactus but i have priority so hobgoblin here will ruin it uh very good chance they have it in hand the problem is if they play it do i still win the game uh with my own galactus right i have nova wolverine to just their wolverine but theoretically they could play more i mean they'd be at negative six with only two spaces available surely that's a win right the destroyer actually is going to end up helping me so much by having priority here all right let's see they just went for giga yondu by the way my deck is empty bro yeah that's galactus 100 percent oh he's plus four from the forge that does help them a little i guess do we trust this dang i don't know man they can play a card here right that's the problem <sighs> dang the wolverines are equal so i'm i'm up by six points basically uh well i guess i'm, I'm a little better on the wolverine because of the nova i, I net, i'm up by eight points is eight points enough to win this or am i better off actually just going left and playing for power what might they have a destroyer could be a possibility I kind of like the idea of just adding a lot more power here. Their own goblin. Um, yeah. Man, this is like kind of iffy, isn't it, dude? What's my best power output here? Six, maybe? Oh, shoot. Six is... Oh, dude, I don't know. This is kind of nerve-wracking now. Shoot, I thought this would be safer, but Galactus being four in particular. Oh, God, I'm going to lose some cubes here, man. We're going to lose. Oh, they didn't even play right! Are you... Oh, come on! That's got to be tiny, though. That's that's just another Yondu, right? No! They didn't even play right! How do they not play right like how do you not play the death here you have to know i'm a galactus deck at this point right maybe not because of the destroyer but by the way death is exactly the sort of thing that beats us i guess right they would have had a uh, 416 added they would have been at uh at at plus whatever so we still would have lost well not with not well they didn't play it so we wouldn't have lost but if they had have played it straight up or, or you know respected this we would have lost man tough one tough one really 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 thought they would contest right oh was she too cheap to go right maybe that's why they decided not to oh yeah that might be yeah she wasn't zero yet was she i don't know she was awfully close to zero because of all the yondus but not zero yet i guess we saw shang chi death maybe she was like two three yondus two novas and a wolverine i don't think any of the wolverines or novas actually got destroyed right i don't know interesting Galactus would have won, but I thought it was a really risky play. Seemed really, really risky. This land can never be Just didn't add enough power. If we'd had a Nimrod in, you know, or a Shuri or something of that nature, Wolverine was bigger, it would have been better. Hey, Gary hates Victory. Weird World. I don't, why don't people play out Weird World? I guess he had a really bad opener. I, I don't know. I didn't have a good opener. <laughs> I, I 
was also really bad. I I, uh, I was putting together my list of tips for infinite. Like I'm gonna make a video. I've got literally like 25 different kind of things to talk about. Uh, one of them was how I think a lot of people tend to overestimate their own bad luck in comparison to their opponents. I think so many people, when, when you see something like Weird World, you're like, oh, I'm screwed or, you know, whatever it is, District X or whatever. I think we really tend to overestimate our bad luck and underestimate our opponent having the same kind of bad luck. So I think a lot of people just retreat or get frustrated when in reality they might be the lucky ones even though it doesn't look like they are. You kind of have to respect it. Uh, Lemuria is a good spot for Galactus. We can dump a Green Goblin, Green Goblin here. Oh yeah, destroy all my three Novas. That's right, that's right. Here's what I'm talking about, old games again, dang it. <laughs> I gotta stop doing that, but yes, you're right. Death was really cheap. Death was, was definitely cheap. All right. Chunk cheese, totally fine. We're giving up this lane anyway. Uh, this is Hobgoblin. We don't have Galactus yet, so I'm playing this as if there's a Galactus, <laughs> but we don't have one. It's a it's a one in three to hit. If I hit a uh, if I don't hit. We could probably just win with Destroyer right either way, right? This is negative 17. That's going to be almost impossible for them to come back from. So we don't really need a Galactus, I guess. Just Destroyer right here should be fine. Oh, they might be thinking about their own Galactus line here, but we might have screwed it up. Oh, dude. That's more fun than Destroyer, even if it's worse. <laughs> um... I don't know though, that gives them the Nimrod, doesn't it? That gives them two Nimrods. No, 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 that's way worse. No, no, no. This is way better. We're up by 17 and 18. That's that's a huge that's a huge deficit. This is way better. We already played Shang-Chi, so hopefully not too much of a risk here. Oh dude! No! No! <laughs> They are playing a shockingly similar list. Non Yandu and Shang-Chi. Hmm. I guess I guess some people are running maybe more electro lists that have room for all that. But we don't. We don't. Daniel, thanks for the prime sub, man. Three months. Three months. Alright, Galactus Shuri Hobgoblin's pretty fun. By the way, Galactus mid last game would have won, wouldn't it? It just, oh no, no, still same problem. And then Rod's note wouldn't have. Oh, uh, did we reveal first? It might have. I don't know. Anyway, this is this game. Pegasus? <laughs> Dude, I think we just hobgoblin left and go for it, right? Like Scorpion mid, Hobgoblin left. The Soul Stone's a little bit of a pickle, but the thing is, right, we know that they're already occupying two spaces. <sighs> I, I think that's okay. Like two spaces gone means they just don't have a lot of options. And we just set up for the Galactus on six with whatever options, Nimrod or Wolverines or whatever. I think the space being occupied is worth more than the um, the debuff, basically. My logic. This also looks wacky with a rainbow, by the way. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's keep it rolling, yeah. Green Goblin as well. Let's go. Um, sure. Shuri next turn. Armor is totally fine. Uh, we need to think a little bit about arrow potentially, I guess. It's always a bit of a risk. That means Galactus is, is going to happen on six. 
maybe play here to try to win priority a little bit better since we know this is never getting priority we might be able to here nimrod would go uh mid here wolverine is the next best draw but not very good <laughs> it's really nimrod we want to hit here right nimrod yes love you buddy all right nimrod mid is good and then we hope to hit the galactus here on uh on six not hopefully no arrow stuff okay, cool we have priority so we don't have to worry about arrow this is perfect great stuff perfect I mean, no Wolverine or Nova, but, but you know, otherwise exactly what we're looking for out of this deck, really. Staple example. I mean, you know, there's still, well, no, I don't think there's any disruption potential when we have priority, right? That's, again, what makes this deck so interesting. Having priority is really nice. They are, they they must feel a little behind and at risk here, right? I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a retreat. I mean, they can flip mid. I don't have a lot of luxury there, but that Nimrod's got to be making you really nervous. Oh, they go for it. I wonder what they played. This is wild. This is just such a crazy line, dude. I love this so much, man. The turn, the, the turn six Galactus is a cube master, man. Chill, twenty-two Victory. extra power there at the end, or well, Soulstone made it twenty-two. Cool. This is Galactus always destroys left to right. Yeah, so you so you want to play your Nimrod in the leftmost of the two destroying locations as you saw i played it mid there if i had played it right i would have only gotten one nimrod uh on the galactus location now that that said there might be scenarios where that's right if you think for instance it's gonna like flip priority in your favor and you want to dodge something like an arrow or a cosmo or something right it, it might like in that scenario i didn't really need 22 power worth of, of nimrods if i thought that playing nimrod right was going to give me a priority advantage then I absolutely could have played Nimrod right and just taken a single Nimrod. Uh, I don't have to have two if, if you've got enough of a power deficit, which we had, thanks to all the goblins. You know, if, you, if you're worried about a power deficit, you probably want to play it in the leftmost of the two remaining locations. So, um, yeah, in that, game we, yeah, in that game we didn't even need the Nimrod. Yes, it's very fair. Yeah, the, the goblins did the job. Um why don't all there's no time to play it uh, this deck has no ramp the, the whole point of this deck is is the turn six galactus not a ramped galactus um so no no time for null when would we play it there's no time we don't we don't we always play galactus on six which i, I think some people are going to resist but uh boy the data so far is 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 resisting that resistance because the data on this so far still looking insane even as the sample size continues to grow it's it's normalized a little since last time we checked but uh you know this is a very very strong set of data so far small but strong high power low sample size currently well those don't 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 use that in a statistical sense not high power from a statistical sense High intensity, let's say, maybe. Power is the wrong word to use there since that means something in statistics. Uh, Urios, dude, thanks for the uh, thanks for the prime sub, dude. All right, let's play maybe like one or two more with this. I think I certainly have enough cool games for YouTube and, and certainly get enough uh, start on the data to, to brag about this a little bit on YouTube. And then we're going to change it up to maybe like an Artem Zola type list. Okay, so that would be fine for Galactus. We've got a good uh, Nimrod line here to get him up to at least seven. It's kind of cool. Might make this hard for the opponent to get rolling as well. I guess eight, really, thanks to the, the Nova here. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we're going to get the randomly generated Galactus or Destroyer. District X, I believe in you. Come on, baby. Okoye is really good with District, Di District X, for the record, just because now all of our random garbage is going to be a little bit better random garbage, you know? 
I think that's kind of true for Nakia as well. Like, Spider Woman's just an insane play. Probably one of the better, like, randomly generated cards, right? Just because it's, it's so swingy, it's just generally good. It's not synergistically based or anything. A lot of times when you're playing, like, synergy cards, they can get a little bit messed up. <sighs> Falcon we don't love because Blade is kind of risky here. I mean, it's definitely an advantage just bumping back the Nova, but I guess we're going for left and and mid here is the win. Maybe like a Spider Woman mid debuff these. I think this disadvantage is pretty notable at the moment, but I love the one the four power blade on the final turns actually pretty legit. That could be a big swing. Oh yeah, Spider Woman mid. Oh, well Colossus isn't exactly the right target, but but still fine. Still fine. Yeah, Spider Woman mid. Uh do we do it now? Ronin actually Probably very often better than Nimrod, right? The odds of me getting a Nimrod destroy play are so slim. There just aren't that many destroy plays, right? So... How do we want to do this, right? I I think this is bigger than Nimrod, because the odds of having low-cost cards... I mean, I guess there are more low-cost than high-cost cards. This might be safer. Still 11 power. Might be a little safer. They might be able to dump their hand. Let's let's try this. Okay, I'm really glad they played there because we were given that anyway. That's that's just a freebie for us. That's totally fine. So um I think I think this is still the move. Eleven here is hopefully enough. We could technically trust the blade, but since they have an advantage here, they may say, hey, I'm gonna try to shore up this advantage. And hopefully a swing of 14 is enough because we're only down three. Oh, actually a swing of 13. Oh, but also the Ant-Man's getting bigger too. Is there ever a world where we do? Oh, we can't do it that way. So no, there is no world. Devil Dinosaur is not bigger because we want to play the blade, right? Th this is, if we're gonna get it, this is the way to do it. It's just a question of, of math. Ant-Man's plus three. This is plus 13 functionally. So they need a 10 power play here to win. Played two things. It's never 10. Oh my God. It's close though. Holy. Cr Wait, is that enough? Why am I? That's, that's gotta be enough. Oh no. It did some really bad math somewhere, man. What was my, how did I say it was 10? It had to be seven power. Oh, I think I didn't count the Ant-Man math back in. Dang. Pretty good set of random stuff, really. The, the gloss is annoying. Uh, like if this, had, imagine if this had just been a regular two, three, and we were able to keep the Nova in here to debuff the lizard, right? It would be a, it would be a four point swing. We got Falcon instead of, you know, Baron Mordo or whatever garbage card. Yeah, a little tough. That's a big boy. Yeah, we take that. That's okay. Uh, would a normal destroy deck with Nimrod and Null work? Uh, we're gonna... We're gonna try that. I mean, I don't... I, I'm having trouble envisioning the Null... I don't I'm having trouble envisioning the Null and the and the uh Nimrod lining up from an energy standpoint. Like what's the curve? When, when are you playing Nimrod and stuff? I, I don't know. Uh but yes, uh, Nimrod has, has felt quite quite uh capable in the deck so far. Very good to shore up the Galactus. Uh Hobgoblin and Nimrod have both served quite nicely as a follow-up to the Shuri into the turn six Galactus, so yeah, it's very good. I'm I'm uh, I don't know we're gonna we're gonna do that right now let's 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 build our second Nimrod deck so this will be more like just Nimrod I, I really wanted to do Zola in particular I think um this actually might have a pretty similar curve to our last version I guess uh Zola Nimrod 
I, I think Shuri is still correct. I, I think you want to buff that Nimrod every chance you get, right? So this core basically is out of the Galactus core that we had before. Have I tried negative Nimrod? No. <laughs> What's the plan? Like Zola, the Nimrod late or something? Hey, Interpoint Station, dude. Thanks for the 12 man raid. That's awesome. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, we might still run Destroyer. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, Nimrod 4, Galactus 5, Null 6. Uh, I, I think that's just... Like, look, I, I hate to keep doing this, but... I, I think you want to get away from the turn... Five Galactus. I, I think for the first time, Nimrod allows you to play a turn six Galactus. And that's why this worked so well. That's that's why we got such good results out of it. Because turn five Galacti, as is the plural of Galactus, it allows for so much disruption and countering and also encourages people to retreat really early once they see it. So we built it for a turn six galactus which is a way bigger cube advantage way more surprising so i just don't think null is necessary it just it feels like overkill because if you build it right the nimrods are giving you like a 20 power turn six anyway in your galactus location so it's like you know you're you're basically creating all of these checks along the way that you have to have these extra cards and synergies and stuff that i think by by streamlining that i, I think it ends up working a lot better basically uh, I don't know. So anyway, so I've been trying to dodge the Electro lines a little bit. Now this deck, it might be, I don't know, we'll have to talk about it again in the context of a non-Galactus deck. Perhaps it makes more sense if we want to go for like, uh, you know, stuff. Um, the, the idea here though, right, would be to say, hey, we're going to get a 10 power Nimrod. We're going to create two copies of those in the flanking locations the two you know non zolid locations and we're going to shift 20 power by surprise to new locations i think is the is the idea i i think destroyer probably still works in this one but i think in this deck we're actually going to run more of a generalized destroy package as well i think i just want good uh early game destroy plays I think we want to have some tempo. We want to make sure the destroyer can work okay. So we're probably still going to run a Cosmo. Although, I don't know. We're really wanting to destroy things. But we got to be careful because, you know, once you've played Carnage Bucky, you don't want to destroy it anymore, right? You got to be careful. If we're running destroyer as a backup plan, we could say no destroyer as a backup plan. We could run, um, like, death as an end game instead which perhaps enables the Nimrod a little less, but ultimately feels pretty good, I think. Yes, he, Nimrod is pink idiot, yes. <laughs> he, yeah, I don't know, he, he looks like something, all right. Yeah, we, we could use you know the typical Destroyer Protect cards like Armor and Cosmo, but they, they just don't go typically well with much else is my worry. How often is that gonna backfire? You know, what we could do is say, hey, screw the carnage and the death lock and say, we're just going to rely on only destroyer. That feels a little wacky to me, too, though. Favorite snap card? I don't know, man. I like Agatha a lot, but I like Thanos a lot. I like She-Hulk a lot. I like Arnim Zola a lot. I like Infinite a lot. I, dude, I don't know. I like Vision a lot, a lot. Maybe Vision. I think he's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm having trouble figuring out the end game on this one. I think we need another card that rewards Shuri on five as well. I think you don't want just Nimrod because you're not always going to have Nimrod. Certainly Arrow is a possibility. <laughs> Certainly Red Skull. <laughs> Vision. What would support, 
like a, 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 a Nimrod Artem Zola line well? Like, or, or, or let's ask it this way. What else would be good with Artem Zola? Maybe Venom, right? We could have some big Venom stacks. That would maybe mean I could remove the Destroyer if we go for the big Venom stacks, use Venom to, to make the stats permanent, right? I think I like that more. So if we do the Venom, we're gonna want Venom feeder cards. We have the Demon already, which is good, but Titania can be really good as a stat feeder for Venom. Certainly the Nimrod is, is gonna be part of that. But you know, basically you make a big Nimrod, on turn six, you could go like Titania, Nimrod, Venom on a 10 power Nimrod, and you're gonna still contest the lane of the Venom, but also be shifting a ton of power into your other lanes as well. So it's kind of like an Arnim Zola in a weird way, right? It's, it's just keeping your stats localized as opposed to spreading them. You could argue the same thing maybe for a Taskmaster, but the Nimrod doesn't get big enough for the Taskmaster, I don't think. Oh, Lizard's a good feeder too. Yeah, Lizard's good. Also just generally good. Um, hey, Caffeine and Bullets, dude, thanks for the tier one. You could put a Black Panther in, I guess, yeah, as a... Certainly not as interesting with Venom. Oh, we can also do Wolverine, I guess, too, by the way, is a good feeder card, since he's scaling and duplicating. Same, he's kind of like a, a baby Nimrod, I guess. Certainly not nearly as good with Arnim Soul or whatever, but... Um, hey, Caffeine and Bullets thanks the 15 months. Did I say that already? I don't know. Yeah, a Killmonger could be helpful against Squirrels. I don't know if I love much else, though. Oh, true. Wolverine could bounce to the Arnim Zola lane and screw things up a little bit. He's definitely not the Arnim Zola target you're looking for. We do need to protect our our lanes, similarly to how we were doing with Galactus, right? We need we need a we need a Zola lane basically where we're forcing our duplications to happen, uh, which we could do with Venom as well. By the way, Venom is also a fine card to duplicate with Zola. Does that make does Venom make the Taskmaster worth it? I, I don't think he's worth it with just Nimrod. Like Shuri Nimrod Taskmaster is not exciting, but you know, uh, a big Venom on five with a you know maybe it's a Bucky and a Carnage and a Lizard and a Venom, and then you Taskmaster that big Venom is certainly a line we've seen before. Kind of gives us another Zola, like a third Zola. I do. There's definitely part of me that's thinking about another stat buffer. Kind of much like we saw in our last stack. The Shuri is really good at, at advancing all of these stats, but you know, we could do a Nakia, we could do a Forge. Those are both fine bodies to eat as well. Like you don't mind eating them with your destroy cards. I think I'm missing a destroy eater. What, 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 what am I missing a card to eat? Nova? Nova's a decent card to eat as well. Nova kind of spreads his stats across the board nicely. But would you rather just have isolated stats like Nakia or, um, or Forge? Nova's definitely cheaper, at least. <sighs> this looks interesting, at least. I don't think wave is right. Because if we run wave, I'd be too tempted to death wave all the time. I hear you for like the turn four Nimrod or whatever, but I think it's fine to play it honestly on this curve. If you add wave, it's like, well, then I got to add death, right? <laughs> and it's like, well, if I'm, if I'm waving on five for death wave, I'm not Nimrodding, you know? I, I think that walks you down a path that just gets you to death wave pretty fast. Um... Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you about the Deadpool. Like, I, I, I obviously see some synergies with Deadpool in a deck like this, right? We know that you can get big Deadpools and do cool things with them, but I, I think it just crowds out your turns a little too much. It's Deadpool's like a really demanding card. You, you, you know, if you're going to go for the Deadpool, you kind of have to commit to the Deadpool and go all in on it. So even though these share a lot of similarities, like I'm getting big stats, I'm, you know, I'm doing things like that. I, I don't think they go together. I think as you probably recognize as well. Um, 
If Nimrod is five, what is six then? Well, hopefully Arnim Zola, but if not Arnim Zola, some combination of, of, you know, Carnage or Venom or whatever, just little cards we can toss in. I, I think we have enough curve flexibility, you know, that we can just play a Lizard and a Venom or whatever. A Demon Lizard Venom type line. We may end up floating some energy here and there. I, I'll acknowledge that, but I'm hopeful that we'll fill it in nicely. I'm curious at least. Let's see. I do not expect this deck to work as well as our last one since the last one went so freaking well, but um, but we'll try. Ooh. Oh yeah, overlay. Thank you, bro. You're a lifesaver, random skid. Your name's not Mark, is it, by any chance? <laughs> uh, wrong deck. Uh, um, no, I got it right somehow. Now that you say that, I sure don't remember clicking it. But oh, you guys were seeing the overlay from the previous one, maybe. This looks right though. Yeah, just delay. All good, all good. I hear you. Opponent snap. Um, Tempo Carnage worth it? Five power Carnage? Like, we're going to play playing Shuri, but no activator for the Shuri currently. Eh, let's, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about waiting, but now that I think about it, maybe I shouldn't be waiting, right? Why am I waiting? What good is waiting? Because I'm playing Shuri on four. There's no one, I guess a hood. A hood would be the only top deck I'd play here. Uh, actually, Deathlock is fine, too just just as good or better here um we definitely want to we don't want to give up five power on curve I'm, I'm pretty sure of that bro rude so we need the nimrod here man oh, i was hoping that hit vormir but but certainly that's fine too is shuri correct i only have a couple decent shuri draws here See, this is what I was talking about. We don't, I don't know if we have enough Shuri cards, man. I kind of need more Shuri cards, guys. It's really just Nimrod, which I love her with the Nimrod. Don't get me wrong. I think that's really important, but I, I think we might need to add another useful Shuri play. Like Deathlock's not really good enough. She doesn't work with Venom, right? He just goes to two and then eats. He doesn't like double on his final stats. Lizard's not good enough. is gonna laugh at me but we we could probably stand to add a uh <laughs> we could probably stand <laughs> to add a red skull into the deck i don't know man death yeah death is sometimes playable i guess sure 11 power for this zola that just seems so weak to me they might think that Vormir's pretty safe, though, I guess. This would be the perfect time to have a Lizard or Titania to toss in, right? This would be a pretty compelling play, I think. As it currently stands, though, I'm not as convinced. And I mean, the surprise factor might be enough to win this, I guess. Oh, dude, I'm so jealous. They're doing what we're doing, but way better. Do they have it? Did they hit it? Oh, crap. I can't, dude. Uh, I don't want to risk too many cubes tonight because because I'm actually ranking up. You know, I care about my cubes right now, but I kind of want to see if they hit it. Uh, they're going to own if they hit it, though, man. So they have Killmonger Squirrel Girl, by the way. But they just hit the Shuri Nimrod, most importantly. Uh, well, well, we'll take four cubes to see some fireworks. That's fine. I'm cool with fireworks, whatever seems like they hit it because otherwise why are you playing this here might just be a venom i guess but same difference it's it's good enough yeah there's the zola and nimrod man it sucks when we build the deck <laughs> our opponent gets to do it but we don't man that's sad so their differences that we can see are squirrel girl and killmonger which um i mean certainly that seems fine for a destroy deck that kind of implies they're running the death line though Shuri death is, I mean, it is a thing. Shuri, and then you have like death taskmaster maybe on the final turn. 
You would need death to be one cost in that world though. Like is death going to be one cost? Oh, we did talk about Black Panther as being a potential Zola play. Yeah. Instead of the Red Skull. Yeah, we could do that maybe. It feels a little weird though. I don't know. I, I uh... did we lean too hard into Venom on this list? I think is a question, right? The like Titania Lizard stuff is only really good with Venom. Is that would we be better off with just Squirrel Girl Killmonger? You know. I, I'm with you. I don't know if I ever destroy enough to get death cheap. Like even if I kill three squirrels and a couple eat cards, you know, we're looking at like six. I, I think you need the death to be pretty cheap to feel interesting. I don't think unless our opponent is also playing destroy cards that we get there on that. I'm feeling like the taskmaster seems a little stranded though. But but I don't know, man. The weird thing is, right? Like if I add a Black Panther to the taskmaster. A lot of the times it's just going to be an eight power play. Like it, it kind of demands the Arnim Zola. The Taskmaster has a couple angles, right? It could, it can be a Venom card. It can kind of be a Shuri card, but like we talked about, I don't know if that's actually true or not. Somebody said Sentry in chat, which is really funny, but I don't actually think good. It's kind of a fun idea though. Uh... I definitely don't want to turn this into Shuri Red Skull. We toss out the Wolverine because we worried about uh, him going into the wrong lane because we want to have a Zola lane. I don't want to throw away our list because we lost one game, by the way. That's not really my goal. I'm just really worried about this Shuri line. I just don't know that Shuri has a good target. And I don't I don't actually think Panther is the right answer. It, it, it's, it, it solves the Shuri problem, but it introduces a lot of other problems is what I worry about. I'm almost thinking about something like a Maximus, which I know sounds weird, but... Um, I, I just want something that's cheap and lets me play a turn five that has some flexibility. Like, I guess you can't really do that, though, because you want to you want to. Like a 14 power Maximus Bazola is not bad, technically. Doc Ock. I do actually like that in theory that we're dumping their power in one lane and then moving out of it with an Arnim Zola. That that's actually pretty interesting, yeah. That's a cool idea. <sighs> yeah, that's a neat neat theory. Um cuz cuz the whole point is we're 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 shifting our power across locations, right? Now that that said, currently we're only doing that with with Zola. So if you hit like a Doc Ock and then you don't hit Zola, are you really sad? You know what I mean? Like if we, I mean sometimes the twenty will win if it's a Shuri Doc Ock. Like that will just win sometimes. I don't doubt that. But it do work. It also makes Titania a little more safe. You can play a, a Titania to follow up and know it's going to connect. This actually does kind of solve some problems. <laughs> Dr. Himes, you said Doc Ock, and then you wrote, I like where this is Doc Ock idea is going. It's like you're cheering yourself on. That's kind of funny. Um, although I guess somebody else wrote Doc Ock right before you. I don't know. Grumpy Monk might be the Doc Ock creditor here. I do, I do kind of like this. I'm going to be straight. That's pretty fun. Uh, all right, let's see how this, let's see how this plays. This is a hard, this is a hard deck to get an idea for, I think. I'm really happy our last deck worked so well, by the way, guys. That was like a vision I had that just played out perfectly. That was really fun. We don't see that too often. 
All right, Wakanda. That's that's a cool. Okay, that's fine. Hood is not good for Venom, but good for all of our other destroyers. So we might want to put Lizard left, perhaps. Certainly, Demon left always feels good. I think. Patriot Demon, dude. What do you know? Uh, this is gonna be a really good Venom lane over here if we wanted, though. I'll say. It's like Demon Lizard Venom that gives us uh, some some Arnim Zola plays potentially. Not great for Shuri again, necessarily, though. Although Shuri Demon is pretty legit. It's just weird to line that up. I guess we could have the turn five Venom. This is another good Shuri target we didn't think about, by the way. Demon's a pretty good Shuri target. Turn five Venom here. He gets really big. Then you hit the Zola, maybe. Cool with trying this, at least. Lizard Men, all right. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Okay, now we're looking at a turn six Venom that's pretty exciting. Shuri into... No, we can't play Nimrod on five. God dang it, Dream Dimension, you suck. I also can't play Venom Demon on, on five either. I can only play Venom. Am I, am I really gonna play a Shuri and, and buff Venom to two? I think, I think more realistically perhaps we just play Shuri on five and then we play like Demon plus whatever on six instead, right? But if I'm not playing Venom, am I putting the, the, the Nova here or not? Am I, am I actually gonna play a Venom, I guess, right, is the question? I don't know, this curve got all wacky, man. D Dream Dimension really blew this up. Oh, okay, interesting. That's, okay. <laughs> Good pivot for once here, maybe. Uh, so this would be like Shuri on five left. Demon plus Venom mid, I guess. Venom mid's not great though. It's four power, I could maybe play Carnage mid if I hit it instead. Maybe just rip a Titania. Ugh, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so we we played Nimrod, Destroyer, Galactus, and it was insanely strong. It felt so good. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you a little bit, Corn Horleo. Yeah, I I think Dream Dimension is probably one of my bottom. Oh, oh, Zero didn't activate. I was like, wait, what the heck? He zeroed your iron heart, bro. What are you doing? You goose? Uh, Arnim Zola, man. If only. This would have been a really cool game if not for Dream Dimension and Cosmo. We actually lined up a lot of the pieces we wanted. I think the challenge here, does Venom get big enough mid? He, he's basically, he's one power himself. He's adding six for Bucky Barnes. I don't really see it, right? Oh, he definitely does not. Um. Opponent snapped. Okay. Um. What do we think their line is here? Like a Doctor Doom, maybe mid or something. I don't know. They snapped. I'm very intrigued so we think they might go to 20 here but i'm gonna lose three here 15 here i only had 12. like i could i could technically do oh, i don't know man this seems really hard i don't think i beat dr doom ever right we're just so far behind I think I lose. Uh, uh, we, we didn't come together. I, I don't think we can stick this out. We, we, we had a cool arm, but the disruption was just too high. Curve disruption, on reveal disruption, armor disruption, right? Sometimes you just gotta say this ain't the game. I don't know. Didn't feel like even sticking it out. We had anything fun to see or do, so let's just call it quits. Okay, uh, Titania we can chill on for a minute. Uh, a minute, it's better with Venom. I mean, Titania, I will say right now, is, is kind of only great for us with Venom. Maybe, arguably, with like a Doc Ock, I guess. 
I definitely, I hate having cards in a deck that only do one thing. I think that's a really big risk. If your card only enables one other card, I think it's a risk. Two is better, right? If a card has kind of a, a cross synergy that way, that's better. I know that's a good carnage feeder, but I, I need plays. We currently don't have good plays. What on earth? So I, I need a Doc Ock, actually, is what I need. I could Doc Ock mid. Could have arguably, I don't know why I'm doing that. Why not just leave that up for plus two? I don't actually think I'm... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm so used to destroying things through destroy decks, but there's no advantage to that here. I should have just left that up. There's absolutely zero upside to that. Oh, those rocks are going to screw me, dude. Going to screw me, man. Doc Ock? Venom, bro. That sucks. Um... He eats the Titania, right? He doesn't send the Titania over? Do you guys know how this works? I don't know how this works. I think his on reveal procs before she leaves. I'm pretty sure we've done this before. As I recall, his on reveal procs before she leaves. Indeed, okay. Oh, interesting. Well, that makes Arnim Zola a All lot worse. <laughs> ah, shoot. Uh, I mean, we saw a rock slide that's really cheap. We saw a Bast come down, though. What is this deck? I guess the question is, are they big enough to beat 12 here or flip this at eight? I could imagine a Dark Hawk with the rock slides, certainly, like a Dark Hawk plus something. They kind of want the Dark Hawk to go here, which might mean they leave this up. If I win this, I am winning Stark Tower as well. I mean, for two cubes, I'm, I'm, uh, Dark Hawk is 12, so that would be a tie here. They do have a pretty cheap Black Widow. But Rock Slide, Dark Hawk is, is, are they gonna put that here, like Rock Slide here and Dark Hawk here? I don't know, we're gonna lose, but I'll stick it out for you guys here on this one. This is worth seeing at least, I think. Oh, they really went hard mid. That makes me excited. Maybe this is big enough. Oh, it's buffed by the bass, too big. Yeah, that makes sense. Way too big. Yeah. Good try, I guess. I think the uh, the real line would have lost this anyway, right? Zola doesn't really get there on this. So no good either way. All right. <laughs> Why not play Titania and Venom left? I guess we could have. My thought was I lose some uh, upside on the, uh, the, the, the buffs because that was going to buff only one card in that case instead of, instead of multiple buffs. But uh, yeah, I mean, if we're all in on the Zola line, it might, it might be worth it anyway just to get... Because even if you lose some buff, you gain... You're duplicating more stats, right? Would have certainly played nicely into the arrow. Uh, all right, this is a really good destroy set. I mean, not actually ideal for, um... Venom, necessarily. Ooh, Nimrod's fun. Opponent snap. Uh, Nova Venom there is cool, but it's just not the biggest Venom, right? It's just, it's just he's an eater. We'd rather have Carnage or Deathlock in that case. Venom Demon's a little more interesting. You can do that on turn six, actually, with a Nimrod as well. Oh my god, dude. These armors, bro. Oh, Luke's bar. <laughs> Luke's bar. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Shuri Nimrod, though, does give us a, a really interesting play and lets us potentially win Luke's bar as well. 
So what we could do is, let's see, uh, like Venom mid with a Demon and a Nimrod. So Shuri on four, this is a 10 power play, 16. That makes the, the Nova, or excuse me, the, the Venom 17. And then we move a big Nimrod here and a big Nimrod here. So I think I have space in other words, cause it's gonna go here, here, here. Sure, you can go here. That puts a Nimrod here and a Nimrod here and it still locks in the big stats as well. I mean, I think this is the line, right? Is it gonna work? I don't know. I don't know. We could also play the demon early if we if we wanted to in hopes of finding a, a, a different play to go with the Venom, but I think that's a little bit riskier because it could get sniped out. And I think I need its stats to contest on turn six. So just make sure it's locked in instead of getting killmongered or something. I don't know if killmonger is super likely to sunspot deck, but with armor it might be. Uh, okay. This is the line, man. I don't know if it's a good line, but it's the line. Oh, they don't play Jubilee on Luke's bar. Interesting. That looks like some electro ramp type stuff. <laughs> Dude, Doc Ock ain't a bad idea, but I don't think it's a good one. Let's stick to the Nimrod plan. Ah, Dr. Doom, I see, okay. We're actually still big enough to beat that right now. Not a problem currently. <sighs> um, This is just dead, right? It actually would eat the Nimrod in this particular order. Is there any reason to play that then at all? Doesn't do anything, it's smaller here. I mean, shoot, this is the line. I mean, we're trying, let's see. Is the surprise Nimrod gonna do enough? Uh, they're at 13 over there. It's not gonna do enough, we lose. Too many Dr. Doom bots. I don't win left, so. Not quite big enough. If I won left, we'd be better off. Oh wait, am I gonna win left with the, uh, the Nova buff? I forgot about the Nova buff. No, I'm still too small. No! Yeah, that's what the deck's meant to do. Just, uh... Didn't get enough stats here, man. I mean, Taskmaster, of course... Well, actually, wouldn't have been better here because of uh, board space, but... Uh, yeah, Baxter building uh, cost us. That were any other non-power adding location we would have got there. Not playing the hood there would have helped. We could have played hood on Luke's bar, but it wasn't up at the time, so we didn't know. Plan to eat those, right? And then the armor came in. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's that's an honest loss. I mean, our power is not especially high, though, if you look. That's the thing. You know, if a Bucky Barnes and a Hood got eight, we would certainly be notably larger. I'm just thinking, like, if this is the best case scenario for the deck, is, is this good enough, right? That That's what I'm kind of asking myself here. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a look and saying, yeah, was that really... It's not the best case scenario, I guess. Arnim Zola is the best case scenario. But but if that's a, if that's a decent case scenario and that's our max power... I'm wondering if that was uh, a good sign or not. Like, do we need more out of it kind of thing? Is this plan doomed, I guess, is what I mean to say, as the Dr. Doom comes in to beat us. I'm feeling, I'm really, I'm coming off that high of that last deck was so good. <laughs> and then this one feels just so average. <laughs> I'm sad about that. Uh, squirrels are a little risky for the Zola game plan, but we certainly have other game plans too. Certainly gonna be a big carnage. Cat bug, they got the new portrait there looking good. All right, uh, we could get a really big venom if we hit it over here. That would be a cool play. Like this plus Venom, like Shuri on four, this plus Venom on five, and an Armzola on six. That would be perfect on the Carnage already getting everything buffed over here. That would be sick. We need to find that Venom though for that line. Oh. Well, that made Venom a lot less. 
a lot less likely, didn't it? Can we get a good turn five play for this Shuri instead, I wonder? Let's try that. Okay, ooh. I mean, that's decent for, oh no, that's already passed. Shuri doesn't matter. Um, I mean, honestly, at this stage, I'm still looking at that Arnim Zola a little bit, right? It's not terrible here. Like, this gets buffed up again on these. I'm just... If I do that, the, like, the, the Shuri here is totally wasted, I guess, right? Kind of stranded, because the, the Carnage would eat it away. I'm trying to think, is there a way to make this Shuri valuable? But the thing is, what else do I do? Because Doctor Strange ain't any good either. We may just maybe better off playing for the Shuri stats than the Zola stats in this case. Got him. It's a big 12 power demon or whatever might be right. Sabretooth. Yeah, man. Uh, like I'm, I'm looking at Silver Surfer now, right? I'm thinking, hey, let's go demon right and then Silver uh, Sabretooth mid. And then just rip Doctor Strange Silver Surfer on six, man. Doctor Strange here and Surfer here. Or wherever it needs it. But I, I think that's the move, right? Add another seven and four, eleven power here. They're pretty capped on, on this one, so. Demon left and 50-50 the Zola? I don't think so. It's just the Carnage would backfire so much. I think this is fine. Since we got all these threes, we kind of got to build your own Silver Surfer here instead. This, this feels safer to me. Oh, magic. Does that change anything for me? Huh. Oh, I got Chavez. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, so let's see. Doctor Strange would add five power mid. I could just go for the Chavez here and really set up mid nicely. I mean, we're just so far ahead everywhere. I mean, I don't know how they're gonna do this. They're unlikely to have a Shang-Chi unless they have one of their opener. We've already seen a few, we've seen two opening hand cards. So they should have a few left. It's not impossible to have a Shang-Chi, but it could go anywhere, right? All three spots are good for that, so. It does let them kind of play it freely here, I guess. Maybe we play this on the final turn. We're gonna have priority though anyway. Up six here, up 10 here, up three here, but this goes here. I don't know, I, I think I prefer having the, the dual play flexibility next turn when I have more information, right? Oh, they didn't Scarlet Witch Limbo, which makes sense because they were super far behind, I understand. Oh, Maximus, that's cool. I hit even more threes, dude. How did I get the world's best Silver Surfer play? Uh, so now I'm thinking about Taskmaster. We got 12 energy, right? This is actually a nine power Taskmaster. Uh, and then I can still play uh, this stuff. We're, we're definitely winning here. Do we just stack up a, a, this location super hard? Even something like a Blue Marvel wouldn't win this. Uh, not a not a silver surfer randomly right i think that's okay we're up by 10 here as they flip this i mean we, we could probably technically put this here and be safe since we're adding nine and and probably six power or something i'm sure it doesn't really matter we're so far ahead across the suite here that anything should be fine they had four cards in hand so not a lot of energy for them that's a crazy game Crazy game. Lemuria. Ooh, we got Doc Ock. Can we hit a cool Doc Ock line? Titania Venom's sort of fun, but risky. Turn one. Take your guesses, guys. What's that gonna be? What what's that card? I wanna hear your your guesses. Give me your guesses, everybody. What's that card? 
Mind stone! Of course it is. It's always Thanos. We could have looked here. Could have helped you guys. <laughs> could have gave you too much info though. Uh... Do we just make a really big Venom here, man? It doesn't feel right to me, but dude, Doc Ock is so good into Jotunheim. Because they get so many more debuffs so much faster, and it's probably going to be a bunch of garbage like small stones and stuff. I guess it could be some big stuff. Lockjaw means they do have some big cards. What is the like three power swing for the last two turns enough to net a big enough advantage there? That's what I wonder. I don't know. Let's do this for now. I think I like the Venom though. It just means the Titania is, uh, well, I guess the Titania is safe anyway, since they're full up. Oh, that would allow me to Jotunheim and, well, I don't know. Does the big, no, I, I think we still Venom this, right? Like we still lock this up. Daredevil is interesting. Is this ever a Galactus deck? I don't know. Wish I could Zola mid, right? That'd be cool. I'm gonna... <sighs> oh! It's definitely a Galactus deck, right? 100%. We're gonna rip this and ruin their Galactus. They know that from the Daredevil, though, so... Did they play Time Stone this turn? When did this get played? They just played Nimrod that turn, so no... That was because of the time zone last turn. So this should be okay, technically. Little, little iffy, I guess, again, but I like the idea of it anyway. Do they retreat when they see the Doc Ock? I don't know. It depends on their hand. They, it's kind of risky because they have six cards, so you know they may get things they like. I think the Nimrod, to me, though, it kind of implies they're not going to have, like, a bunch of big stuff. Ah, the Carnage just to move it over. Okay. That means we're still winning mid, though, technically. Oh, that's big. That's that's actually... Oh, my God, bro. No, <laughs> it didn't go to plan. It didn't go to plan. This almost gets you there, right? We know their their only play is going to Lemuria, so this just doesn't make any sense. We're better off going with Shuri Lizard. Wait, what? Victory. Why retreat? <laughs> Maybe they thought I had a Shang Chi. That is a that is a Maybe they just had nothing in hand. Maybe they thought I could beat eight power advantage here. How can they not add enough power to beat an eight power advantage left? Like they're ahead by eight. What would I have that wins left? When they have three cards in hand, like let's assume one's Galactus, right? But what would the other two be that can't beat left? Even two stones get you to 10. Maybe that's all they had is two stones and they didn't think uh, they didn't think two stones win. Which technically they wouldn't have if I go Shuri Lizard. I mean, that's a 12 power play. That seems crazy, though. It must have been Galactus and two stones and. Were there two stones left? We 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 saw the mine stone and the green stone here there was only the blue stone and the red stone left yeah maybe they had exactly blue stone red stone and that's it huh that's wild yeah they should have retreated later because i was about to retreat i think i was absolutely about to retreat uh oh dude where did that message go where did that message go dude nimrod keeps getting banned in chat because twitch thinks it's an insult Somebody wrote a message, I lost it, that said, Regis, I've climbed 10 ranks with your Nimrod Galactus deck. I feel ashamed. That says, Ubin Bamboozled says that. 10 ranks with your Nimrod Galactus deck. Dude, that's insane. Congrats, dude. It felt so good, I gotta say. I can't wait to make a video about that and really brag it up. That's gonna be fun.
now this deck does not feel as good what was the deck list for nimrod galactus uh this here it's a turn six galactus deck uh Have you tried a deck with Nimrod and Destroyer yet? That one right there. This freaking spot on my forehead, dude. Got this big spot on my forehead. It's still there. Yeah, Destroyer was basically a backup plan of this Galactus deck, which worked great. Oh, you guys can't see that. What an idiot. Here you go. Sorry. Here's the Nimrod Galactus link list. Sorry. Uh... Yeah, this new deck is not working as well, guys. Definitely. I mean, we were getting some funny wins. It's not been terrible, but... <laughs> this felt unlosable there for a while. And then... Uh... And then this new one's just not, you know, we're, we're down a lot of cubes so far. I wonder how to fix this new one. I, I don't know. It just doesn't feel good, does it? We actually haven't even hit a Nimrod Zola yet. It's so weird. You'd think we'd be hitting more Nimrod Zolas. Maybe we just need more games. <laughs> Leans into Venom too much. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I kind of also feel that way, but I, you know, the, the worry is without it, how does the Arnim Zola have enough upside? Right? How do how do you make the Arnim Zola good in other? The theory, right, is that you need the Venom to make Arnim Zola worth it. And now I will agree with you that that has not really paid off yet. That's only that's only been true in theory so far, not in reality. So I I do worry. I mean, the Doc Ock is a decent Arnim Zola line as well. That that could maybe allow us to free out that Venom space for something better. Since we added the Doc Ock. But then I still kind of worry about the turn six. We have enough activators for the Nimrod. Destroyer, I don't think works well with the rest of the deck. It's just not, it's just not good enough. Can confirm the plus five levels on new tiers is live. Awesome, dude. Thanks, man. Also, crazy fast climb. Way to go. <sighs> that armor looks cool. Did I, did I mark that as my favorite accidentally? I didn't mean to. Those look freaking cool, though. Yeah, I, I, I still think Panther's wrong. I, I, I don't think you run Panther when you only have one reason to play it, which is exactly Shuri Panther Zola. It's just so bad every other time. You know what I mean? It's only good if you hit that exact curve and it works with none of the rest of the deck, right? I, I don't think that's right. I'm happy to be proven wrong if somebody builds it and says, hey, this is amazing, but that feels wrong to me. I, I, let me look at like let me just look at some decks that run early game destroy packages see if we can't learn anything like i definitely don't think death wave is right that just doesn't make sense to me because you want to play nimrod on five not wave so killmonger squirrel girl seems unnecessary because you're not trying to discount death i just don't think that's that makes sense I mean, 
do we even need like the Bucky and the Nova and the Hood? Are we better off going for hand buff cards and then just maybe using our two destroyers as our turn six instead of instead of Arnim Zola? Or I mean, I guess Arnim Zola two is fine, but you know, the, the, you don't have the Arnim Zola. You can Venom one and then set up the Carnage in the other lane and and hit it again, right? So what we could do instead is is maybe add more of that like hand buff stuff we had in the Galactus stack to get the the, the Nimrods bigger, but the, it's the same issue, right? It's like if we don't hit this, what are we doing with these? These just are dead if you don't hit Nimrod. I don't know the point of the Nimrod in this case. So half your early game cards are just dead. You could just, I guess you could just play good cards early game. Yeah, no, I'm not saying Death Wave is a bad deck. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense with Nimrod, right? Obviously, Death Wave is a fine deck. <sighs> Let's think about this for a second. Let's look at a Shuri list. Because in a lot of ways, we're kind of trying to be a Shuri deck, right? Could we run an early game Shuri package? Uh, actually, we kind of want a Shuri Zola deck. Hold up, I think I have a Sauron Shuri Zola deck here. Yeah. So... You know, we could literally just run Sunspot and Ebony Maw and like armor and like just good early game stuff or Lizard, whatever. Kind of that neutral tempo package almost. This is hard. Deck building's tough, guys. Only 12 cards, but really hard. Nimrod on four, Deathlock and Carnage on five, then Destroyer on six. I mean, that is hilariously funny, but uh, the problem is that the stats aren't big enough. I, I think you have to scale the stats on Nimrod to make him feel good. That's been my experience so far anyway. Like, I, I feel like I want to be running the Nakias and the Okoyes of the world and scale his stats up a little bit, and then Nova has done the same thing, I guess. This feels so bad, though. Like, this just doesn't look right. This looks like the same Galactus deck we just built, but way worse, you know? It just looks worse. <laughs> Hulkbuster's wrong because you got to play it too late for the Nimrod, right? It just doesn't make sense. There's no time. What about a Zooey Destroy with Nimrod as the top end? That's kind of where we just started and it wasn't feeling good. It was feeling clunky. Uh, sorry guys I'm just thinking a lot I know I'm not narrating my thoughts very well at the moment but I'm just thinking a lot like if I wanted to run a good just early game Tim Bowie package with some hand buff what would it look like and would it be any good you know just get power in two spots. You know, I guess I guess really destroyer decks do that pretty well. If we wanted to look at maybe a destroyer deck, like you know, you got that lane where you build the sunspot, the armor, and that stuff. And then you just dump a big Nimrod. And then you play the destroyer. 
I kind of hate running Destroyer again because we had Destroyer in our last deck. Um, I mean, it feels unique because of the, the Galactus angle, the last one I Galactus, but let's think about that because that's kind of what we're trying to do is like build two really good lanes and Destroyers sort of do that, right? Uh, where are the good destroyer decks, man? Hold up. Zero destroyer, spectrum destroyer, ongoing destroyer. Electro wave destroyer. You're trying to destroy it's not working very good. Whole cluster venom on Nimrod on six. I mean, I, it technically works. Yeah. I feel like right now the problem is we're all in on this Nimrod right now and it feels so weird. Zabu Wong Shuri Nimrod Destroyer. That's pretty funny. When you hit that, that must feel really good. But every other time, which is a majority of the time, I bet it doesn't feel so good, does it? Um, I, which you know, you're kind of thinking the same thing we are, right? Like the big, the big payoff late with the big Nimrods. But I'm saying, like, let's not go too all in. Let's have a little bit of power on board already, so that the the Nimrods are complementary as opposed to all in. I'm literally just thinking about like, just, you know, good cards early and then Nimrod late, you know? Like, what does a good card deck look like early? I think it looks a little bit like this. The The Carnage and the Venom are, are definitely stranded at the moment though. They just don't have a lot of upside other than a turn six play, which feels weird. So maybe we still need like one Bucky in there, but Venom is so bad with Bucky. Maybe, well, you want Venom because you want to absorb the Nimrod stats, right? That's the problem is like you don't want to give up. Like you don't want to run Deathlock. But Venom's so bad early. He's so much worse for Tempo. But you like locking in the Nimrod stats. Like if you buff Nimrod to 10, then Venom is way better than Deathlock. But he's so much worse on like a turn three. Could run all three, I guess. That's we're, we're kind of right back where we were a minute ago, though. You know, we're not <laughs> we're not too far off from the deck five minutes ago, ten minutes ago, whenever we started tweaking it. Right, we're really close to where we were. Yeah, no, I I, I think Negasonic would make this feel a lot more interesting. Yes, but. Uh... Storm is kind of a neat idea because you could go for a lockdown build, but then it's like, are we just better off with Dr. Doom? You know, it's more reliable. It's, I, I need this hand buffing to scale a little bit. I, I think a Nova is still right. Nova, Nova less reliable though. So you don't always have the Nimrod on board when the Nova gets destroyed. Forge feels wrong. I don't think that's right. I wish I had like three Shuri's in the deck. <laughs> I wish I could just run a bunch of Shuri's. That would make me much happier. Any other fours that just add up for this? Wong without a Zabu makes no sense. Sentry's kind of cool in theory, but not really. Arrow probably wins a lot of games, to be honest, but. Can I really just put Arrow in, man? It's so bad, right? Like, it's so evil and bad. It's not right. I don't want to. Chavez? I 
I don't actually hate Chavez, but we do have things we care about hitting on six. So I don't think so. Yeah, I don't hate Storm. Uh, the problem with Storm is we don't have a good turn four. Like, yeah, in theory, you don't need it if you if you're playing for Nimrods anyway, but. I don't know, man. It, that means we have to have the Nimrod or the Zola. I, I mean, we could try it. I'm cool with it. It, it, it kind of fits the game plan. It's definitely good with Lizard and Sunspot anyway, I guess. That might be okay. Kingpin, Shuri, Nimrod, Heimdall. That's... <laughs> that's a wild that is a wild play dude i don't hate it it's funny i kind of like it for later definitely not a day one build though let's try this let's see how this feels let's see how this feels i don't know i i, I think uh actually i want to rename the deck hold up because i think it'll it'll maybe list it as a new deck two uh we'll call it buff I don't know if this is going to start a new deck, but I want to track my stats separately. Hold up, guys. Sorry. Uh, Nimrod buff. Let's try that. Ooh, not good for Nimrod, but uh, interesting for like Venom maybe. You can stack up stats and leave space open. It's kind of cool. Shuri Doc Ock is also insane. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess that's right. I mean, do I just play Venom on three? I guess let's see what we hit, right? Because that could change things. Like Sunspot would be better. Uh, Deathlock in some other location or Venom just to get one extra power for, uh, for the Nexus, I wonder. <laughs> Is this excessive? Uh, I don't know, man. Oh, overlay. Oh, God, guys. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Coltion, dude. Thanks for the 18 months, by the way. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I mean, theoretically, I, I want to eat the lizard, right? Because he's negative threes. This is kind of like adding four power. I, I don't know. We're going to have four cards there, we know, because of Doc Ock. So I, I think this is correct. It just feels weird. But we know our curve for the most part. We don't exactly know what we're doing on six, but we know it for the most part. We should be able to put Shuri here because we are only ever really going to want one card here anyway. It's not even going to be a good card. We don't have anything other than Doc Ock to add a bunch of power. It might literally just be Nimrod, right? Ooh, they went Reality Stone and locked out mid. Okay. Fortunately, that is really big. Hopefully, we get some small garbage stones and stuff here. Um, I mean, we're getting 28 power, so we're not going to be a baby anyway, but hopefully... <laughs> Oh, that's big too. We are making their hands smaller, but that's making it bigger. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no, dude. These gotta be tiny, tiny cards. Oh no, dude! Come on! Are you serious? <laughs> it's crazy dude the the dino just dodging the valk so hard how do we not hit stones man come on it's brutal uh i kind of need to take a pee break guys uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break i'll be right back uh give me one minute we'll obviously uh we'll play some more than see how it feels but i'll be right back all right These pixels are triggering. 
Do you know why I use the pixels for the, uh... For the BRB screen? Can you tell me why I used them? Curious if you can sort it out. So that cannot be a Shuri Nimrod lane, but this can be a Nimrod spot, maybe. Uh, we could also play Carnage here. Or Venom here. So we actually have a pretty decent uh, turn six setup here. Like an Okoye or Nakia actually would be good here. Okoye is already on board. Uh, Yandu's Silox making me think Galactus. They played Silox early though, so maybe not. I don't know. I guess I take that back. Uh, so we can actually storm this. Play Shuri here next turn. Oh no, but we're going to want... Uh, two spots for the Nimrod. So I actually can't really storm, right? Because... If I do that, I gotta play Shuri here because I can't play it here or here. Oh, I can play it. No, I can't play it here. Big House means I can't storm, actually. I think we just pass. Big House precludes the storm, I think. Uh, Cloak would have opened it up again, unfortunately. This is Galactus, man. This is obviously Galactus, right? Dang it, I should have played Shuri last turn. Now I could Nimrod into 10 power for the Galactus lane. I mean, I can still get the Nimrod going for the Galactus lane, but it feels so much worse. Dude, they baited me with this Psylocke. I didn't think it was possibly Galactus. I'm really sad and annoyed now. Uh, Charlie, you're close on the pixel thing, yes. Uh... Oh, the Galactus goes here? Oh, death. Oh, okay. You're close. Yeah, uh, the, the, the the artwork resolution I have is too low. So I um, I had to use pixel art because when you blow it up, it still looks like pixel art. <laughs> Whereas a lot of the full art resolution is not. If I blow it up to fit the widescreen view, because it squares in the game files, if you blow it up to fit the widescreen view, it looks terrible. So I had to use pixel art. So yeah, very close. Very close. All right, man. This is the play. Um, is it big enough? I don't know. I'm too lazy to math it out, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest. So we're getting, what, 10 and 10 here. And then... So this is only going to have the carnage. Oh, I actually should do Venom second, shouldn't I? This is wrong. I did it wrong. I did it wrong. I mean, it's going to be big enough anyway, but I did it wrong, right? You want to do Venom second because he can eat two that way, right? Or no, there would only still be one. Oh, no, I, I did it. Okay. I don't guess it matters, right? Hold up. <laughs> it, it works. So number one, A+. Plus. Good job, team. But number two, um, I guess there's never a way to, for Venom to eat two because the second one doesn't exist until the first one's been eaten. Like, like you, you know what I mean? Like a... You're playing the, the second one on an empty lane. I guess you could, like, if this had been not Wakanda, we could have played a Venom here and ate some extra stuff, but that doesn't really change anything either. Um, Yeah, that worked okay, though, man. I mean, that's what the deck's supposed to do. That's what the deck's supposed to do. Um, Should I have Zolud? I don't know. Did Zola win middle guaranteed? If so, I probably should have Zola, right? Uh, if the math was solved, I kind of, I kind of was locked in and talking about pixel art, but Zola might have been safer. Yeah. Missed ten power mid. Wait, how do you mean? If the Venom went mid, then I would have 10 less power here. So it's just... Like, uh, the Venom order, again, doesn't matter. You you put the Venom where you want the power, basically, I guess. It is the... It, but, but... Carnage is going to waste a, a dude, obviously, because that's how it works. 
Like, yeah, if we could run two Venoms and play them both, that would be perfect, but we can't. But that's kind of what Zola does. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Let's move on to the next game. I'm happy to have a win in the belts, though. Plus one energy. Nakia not really hitting the right targets, unfortunately, so we're probably still going to stick to the Okoye here. Um, we need a location for the Nimrod, potentially, so that's probably going to be mid, since we know that's safe. So let's put these out right. Wave left. They about to play a Galactus on us, bro? We reveal first, can we screw up the Galactus? It's gonna go... Well, I don't know, are they gonna go right because they're worried about the sunspot? Oh, they can't go right, so... Let's just... Oh, we, wait, wait, the, 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 we, can't, we can't play anything! They played the wave too early! Ah, oh, dang it, bro, you played the wave too early, man. That's fine, we just benefit from Sunspot, that's great. So now they can't, uh... Now they can't Galactus this turn. Uh, Nakia goes left, because it won't reveal right. Nimrod mid into uh, Vintage Carnage. Venom Carnage is fine, right? Carnage mid, Venom right. <clears throat> it's not the biggest Nimrods, but the, hopefully they win Death's Domain and we can test. Uh, we can test right. It's okay. This would be much much better if it were a Shuri. Oh, Nimrod left Carnage mid. Oh yeah, yeah. We might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't even thought about it yet. But yeah, Death's Domain might be better for Nimrod. Let's let's talk about it, right? Because. We're gonna get an extra proc. Okay, that's sad. This is kind of free. Um, yeah, this is just a free extra proc, so this is great. <sighs> six and six, and then uh, same difference. Yeah, we get one extra dude. Yeah, this is fine. Assuming no disruption is a problem. So yeah, if these were, you know, if these were 12, we'd be a lot happier for the Shuri, but we, we take it. Venom's a little bigger at least, that's nice. So here we go, um, Carnage mid, and then Venom right? I'm trying to think where we want the power to be. Uh, I guess we want more power to be mid because that's how we win mid stronger right so we probably go we probably want to go venom mid right in other words like this carnage and the okoye do the same thing anyway so that's fine so this this makes the venom eat both nimrods i mean this is just really strong either way right does the card... Oh, no, no, wait. Dark Dimension screws me a little bit there, doesn't it? Um. Well, no, it's the same. No, it does screw me a little bit. We want the Venom to eat three of these, right? Yeah, no, this is right. Because of Dark Dimension, this is right. Victory. This Carnage Venom thing is blowing my brain a little bit, but I don't know why it is. <laughs> it's, I, I have to keep thinking about it and I don't know why um, I, I need to actually sit down and break out does it matter it doesn't matter right because if the I guess you never want carnage eating two nimrods is the is the the check you always want venom eating two nimrods so you should play carnage first I mean I guess technically I guess technically that depends a little bit on where you want your power, but you you really want Carnage eating one Nimrod and Venom eating two Nimrods because if Carnage eats two Nimrods That second one is inefficient from the Carnage eat Should use Deathlock not Carnage here. Oh, yeah, sure. That's one extra power. Yeah, sure 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 5v6 yeah we had a sunspot, that wouldn't necessarily be true, but we lost it. Okay. They didn't have it anyway. Whatever they were doing did not work out for them. All right, so we've won a couple games of this already. This feels better than the last list somehow, even though we didn't really do much differently. Maybe just variants, right? We didn't play a lot of games in the last one. 
that's amazing dude you always get repeat locations i don't i don't i'm a conspiracy theorist on this i don't buy that this is not a thing i think this is a thing doc ox gone that's fine replacement for doc ox a lot of people are saying black panther i still i'm honestly still not super sold on the black panther but it's not a crazy idea A little bit risky, I guess, to have these in play, but not really. Only for Zola, not for Venom Carnage. If we go for the traditional destroy stuff, it'll be okay. Tempo Carnage. I was trying to snipe Death's Domain, I bet, right? That's fine for us. We can play Nimrod on Death's Domain, too. And now we have this, so we don't even have to worry about Zola. Uh, these are obviously great targets. Nimrod going to seven's cool. Deathlock as well, okay. Sure. Shuri? Oh, no Shuri. Um. So, probably just best off with Sunspot here, right? We want to make sure we're venoming the Sunspot lane. Storm, by the way guys, again, Storm is feeling really awkward to me. I guess we could go Storm here, but I lose a Nimrod cycle because Death's Domain is so good. If I go Storm here, I can't play the turn six Venom Deathlock stuff. If I go Storm here, it's the same problem. I have to put one of my Eaters in Death's Domain, which is, is not good. I want to be able to eat twice on the final turn, and if I lock this out, I can't eat twice on the final turn. Now, that's not as a big a concern with Death's Domain, I guess, but... Without Death's Domain, I mean. If we, uh, okay, that's fine. Wave into Nimrod's cool. Wave on four? Are they playing like a Galactus at all or anything? Oh, that's fine too. It doesn't matter, nothing matters. Oh no, that's not fine. That's, that's bad. That's really bad. Actually, that sucks. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, Zola, Zola left here will be perfect, okay. Thankfully, since these got hit, or this got hit by the Iceman, uh, Zola left here will be ideal. Yeah, this might be snap worthy as well. I, I'm not snapping because I want to see it happen, but you should consider it. <gasps> but ours are just bigger, right? And we should be able to make as many or more. Oh, I'll tell you what though, I guess we have a board size problem. Are we at all worried about that? We're losing a Nimrod mid due to board sizing. Is there ever a world where we just death or excuse me, venom this and and try to win the flanks? That leaves me with 14 and 12. And or 14 again. Isn't this just better? Lizard Venom instead? You mean like here? 16? Yeah, that's also good, yeah. Sunspot scales anyway, but this scales a little better. This should be fine, right? This is just better than Zola because of the board spacing problems, I think. Walking down that Zola line might just be a loss if you commit to it. I think since... Oh! Oh, dang! Okay, that was not what I expected to see, but... Uh, all good, all good. Victory. I mean, it looks like the Zola line would have won as well, but I, I think this ends up with, with way more total power, right? Because if we go Zola left, we have no power left, and then we have, like, two Nimrods right, but who cares? And you still end up with one Nimrod mid. So this, this lets you contest basically left, whereas the Zola plan does not let you contest left, so. Man, if they flipped these, uh, were we revealing first? Surely we were, right? Yeah, we were. They could have won if they flipped these. Hit the venom and then death flips here. Ooh, kind of scary. 
Yeah, the Nimrod, dude, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm actually the same way. The Nimrod stuff's actually not that confusing, but for some reason I have to keep thinking about it a lot. I don't know why. Cube GPT is a funny name. It's, it's really melting my brain a little bit. It's one of those things I'm sure we'll get a little more used to, but. Okay, this is a weirdly fine hand, I think. It's not going to be super strong. But it's probably okay. We can like Okoye Storm here. Um, we're not gonna get a good Nakia on a on a Nimrod, unfortunately. But we can play the Nakia on uh, five or four, excuse me, Nimrod on five, and then Venom Deathlock on six. So pretty good, pretty good hands in the scheme of things. Oh, Thanos, their 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 card quality density is often going to be fairly low. We might actually need to make this the uh, Deathlock Nimrod lane and then Venom here. So we could Storm right maybe. Maybe Storm Expansion is safer if we think about it. Because it might be a way for them to, to nab some power over me. <gasps> That's useful for them. I actually want to Storm that. They're gonna get um, Vibranium Mines cards, which are good for them and not really all that helpful for us. Dang, that's, I hope they don't play here this turn. I hope they wait a minute. I'm not breaking anything here, right? We still go Nakia mid. Oh, actually we have to go Nakia right. Two cards here, two cards here, this here. And then uh, Deathlock here, Venom here. Yeah, that's fine. So Nakia right. Hopefully we get a good card here. Okay, they didn't play to mines, so that's good news. So now they don't get any extra value off the mines. Hopefully we don't lose hard on the X-Mansion trade. Oh, Electro's actually really good for us, I bet. It might not be too bad though for them if they have high powered cards instead of stones, right? It, it could be decent for them, but this should be fine. Okay, let's see. We'll poop. <laughs> um, poop. Poop diddy doop diddy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, half in the chat for leech. Yeah, uh, such a good game plan, man. Ruined, as always. I mean, the the Nokia hand buff here is gonna end up being pretty pretty good, I think. We have quite a few stats. Oh, that's bad that we lose l right though. Um, I mean, listen, this is worth a try, right? It's worth a try. They only have two cards in hand. I, I'm I'm mostly worried about them playing one really big one like mid and just you know. Like a Thanos or whatever is just too big, but for two cubes, we'll we'll definitely play it out. We'll see how it goes. Uh arrow, same difference, yeah. Pretty strong card quality for them to have uh given the Lamentus, right? Not a bunch of garbage stones. They had bleach, blue marvel, and arrow. Which and they and they hit the electro, which gave them the five five line too. Otherwise they would have only been able to play one of these as opposed to, to to both of them. So that's that Electro, as we said, was clutch if they hit the right side of their deck. They they nailed that Lamentus, man. We got kind of ripped off. That sucked. Like what a what a perfect set of cards to get. You know, imagine if they just had like move stone and and uh I guess the soul stone would have been okay, but not great. Certainly not a not a blue marvel. Okay. Sanctorum is actually fine for us. We have ways to get over there, of course. Oh my god. So we really just want Shuri, Nimrod, and an Eat, and we win, right? That's fine. So I don't 
Well, you know, we could just put Sunspot to the right as well and just say screw any like Shuri or whatever, just Sunspot into Zola, but that would... Well, no, that would actually be fine for a Nimrod as well, wouldn't it? Because you can still Nimrod on top of the Sunspot and then if you hit an Eat, like if you hit a, you know, we've got Carnage or whatever, we can still Nimrod the, the Carnage and, and play the Nimrods over. And then if you've got an Arnim Zola, whether it hits the Sunspot or the other one, it would still be fine. So I think it's okay to play this is my, my takeaway here. Psylocke could mess things up a little bit. Mirror Island, okay, nice. Oh, there's the Nimrod too, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> do we ever, do we ever play the storm? No, right, we don't. Not with a Nimrod in, in action. Um, yeah, so we just play Shuri Nimrod, right? It's the same, it's the same story. We, we're just happy to Shuri on four, Nimrod on five, and then whatever, Deathlock or whatever on six, Carnage, I guess, bigger, but you know, whatever. Should be okay. As long as they don't disrupt this somehow. Nova Psylocke has definitely got me thinking about Galactus. Um, Opponent snapped. They, they snapped, so I'm thinking maybe they have a Galactus. Are they planning to win via Galactus? Because Nimrod can, can beat that on like Luke's bar or whatever. Oh, they also have the Nimrod. Uh, theirs is big, but it's not Shuri big yet. I think they're gonna Galactus here, but we're revealing first, so we'll still get the Nimrods. Uh, Galactus here means we're each only gonna have the one Nimrod though, so I might have to win on power on the final turn Which is not easy. I'll have an advantage thanks to the Nimrod, but only a small one. Oh But that's fine. We can't play the Luke's bar anyways. No, I will win. That's totally okay N None of us can add power here anyway. Oh, not not what I thought That's just Deathlock. Okay Wolverine's not big enough to beat this then, right? Because mine's 10 in both spots, and that's... Well, oh, actually, it's going to be 11 to 12 there, but again, that doesn't matter, because I'm still really big here as well, right? Um... Do I ever do this? I know that I'm winning Nimrod, and I'm pretty dang sure I'm winning Venom too, right? So there's no reason to do that, right? Could also... Storm this. But again, that just adds risk, right? Yeah, I know it gives me two... I guess this actually is technically... I lose mid, but I know I win right because I go to 22, and then I know I win. I know I win Mirai Island because I'm getting another Nimrod back. I think this is actually more likely to win, isn't it? Because it, it's a guaranteed, guaranteed win left. Oh! I don't know the math. I don't know the math. I don't know the math. <laughs> I don't know the math. I I don't know the math. I don't know the math. I think we're fine though. We should be totally fine, right? We're gonna win left and right, I think. Oh no, we're not. We're one off. No way. No! No! Or way more off with Muir Island. No! The original line would have won. I mean, that's that's really hard to know, right? If the Wolverine rolled either other spot, we win. Outsmarted ourselves? Not really. See, that's really hindsighty. That's not necessarily true, right? Because look, if Wolverine goes to either other spot, suddenly this play looks really smart, right? Because like, if Wolverine goes here, we lose mid, right? So it's not, it's not right to say outsmarted yourself. There's no, there's no way to know, right? It's that, that's just a Wolverine roll. If this goes here, then the other play loses mid because they got 15 and I only have 11. The, the single Nimrods in the other spots don't win in that case. So it's just bad luck. It's, it's fine. That's cool. Um, so they're running, by the way, Destroyer. We, we, uh, we, we talked about obviously Destroyer being good in this deck. We already played a Destroyer version though, so I didn't want to do Destroyer again. 
but that did look pretty good. Um, so we, we talked about Nimrod on four or five, four. What did they play on five? Like a Deathlock or something? I don't even remember. Yeah, Deathlock in the Destroyer, right? Yeah, that worked out. Good game, though. Fun game. Really close, by the way. Wolverine here or here would have won this line. So actually, uh, actually, I think if I'm looking, I think this is the right line using hindsight again without hindsight. Who knows? But they actually win two out of three times. Uh, they lose two out of three times with this line because Wolverine in either spot here loses in the game. In this line, if I take the other line, Wolverine wins in either spot because I'd only have 11 and 11. So this line wins two out of three times. The other line only wins one out of three times against this. Right? And this is more power overall too, yeah. So I think this is actually the right line, just really unlucky roll. It's always good to see when those, you know, feel like they went wrong, but actually kind of went okay. Just bad luck. Hey, Cutlass, thanks for the raid. Super flow. Okay, that's a fine spot for Nimrod stuff, I guess. Uh, Shuri Ock also is kind of cool, too. We wanted to hit an Arnim Zola in particular. That might be nice. Dump their power left and then shift it, shift ours to mid and right. That would be cool. Lamentus one. That's twice tonight, dude. Can I get? Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, this is actually not too bad. Yeah, let's uh, let's split our power here. We'll do the Shuri Doc Ock thing. That's gonna rip out a vast majority of their hands, and then I'll just Zola the Doc Ock, and this should be a hundred percent. I'm not gonna snap, but you should. I want to see this game play out because it looks really fun. But I think you should snap. They're playing in super flow and they're putting their debris in super flow. Okay, that is, that is interesting. Just giving me the, the net advantage here by choice. Let's actually put the Shuri here because this has a, a little bit more ability to scale later. If I need to, since we're riding the super flow benefit at the moment. Oh, that makes the that makes the Artem Zola a little bit worse. Or really a lot worse. But we might be able to just win by sacrificing a lane instead, like sacrificing mid here. Or just outpowering it too. Like Doc Ock might just be big enough, right? Who knows? Yeah, see, this is a scalable lane, so that's kind of fine. I mean, they only have three cards left, so if they're not... <laughs> if they're holding cards here, Doc Ock is going to pull them out. Um, I wonder if it's worth it here to ever just skip... I guess we can always skip on six. That gives me more flexibility. I mean, this is this is going to be their entire hand, so... Let's see. They may want to hold some stuff back here and they're not going to get to. Spider Woman, that's insane, dude. It's actually going to be kind of tough, maybe. What is their deck, by the way? Dude, no. <laughs> dude, do dude, Doc. Oh, interesting. Doc Ock is hot, utter garbage, dude. <laughs> I mean, come on. He has not gone good one time. God! I can't believe how perfectly that answered everything I had. Uh, it's 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 so insane. I, I honestly think we would have lost anyway. I, I Even if Doc Ock wins this. I guess we know, though. Can we beat eight? Um... I, I don't think I can beat eight. Oh, I could have maybe Doc Oct since the Killmonger came out it, it, and that would have isolated the Oct. I guess, yeah, if there weren't a Shang-Chi, we had a chance maybe. <sighs> Just a 
completely hard countered. <laughs> I mean, both of the Harlemin just won games tonight have gone so bad. The opponent has had the absolute nuts both times. Uh, okay, this is a great little uh, Shuri Nimrod start. Yeah, this is beautiful. Super flow, okay. Do we benefit from that enough to keep it, or could we wipe it with Storm right away? Part of me thinks we, we know our curve and we kind of have everything we need right here already, so let's just wipe this in case they benefit more from it. There's no reason for us to give them a benefit when we know we're settled, right? So yeah, let's, um, let's Storm mid and then Shuri can go mid too, that's fine. And then Nimrod wherever, it doesn't matter. Nimrod right. <laughs> <laughs> we play them run right. And we can play Carnage or Deathlock left, so that's okay. Um, so I'm going to be honest, I forgot we were ramped up and we couldn't play Shuri this turn, which... It, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. We can play Shuri and Nimrod together with these, so that's okay. It's actually totally fine. If it was an Arnim Zola line, we would be in trouble, of course, but it's not Arnim Zola, so we're okay. This looks like Cerebro too, huh? Interesting. Does that mess us up at all? Shuri getting destroyed here, also fine. Not a problem. C2, uh, those are going to potentially get another, uh, what, uh, 612? That's 18. I am going to be adding um, more than 18. We're going to be adding... Uh, 20 power there, so we should be okay, theoretically, if this is a full Cerebro 2. They decide not to risk anything right, which makes sense, because they don't know I'm playing Tiny. Also means our math here is a little bit solved out. Shouldn't expect any disruption from a Cerebro 2, should we? They snapped, though. Maybe they're going to play... I don't know. What are they going to play? What does Cerebro 2 have that snaps on a Nimrod? No Cosmo. <sighs> I don't know. Oh, Venom, dude. Uh, We want Venom hitting the second Nimrod, right? Yes, we want Carnage eating... Well, no, there's not two Nimrods on the Venom. That was only when we had the Death Domain earlier. This is fine though, right? Uh, we went mid and we went right. Right has 26 power. Oh, no, 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 no. This is wrong. We want this. We want that Venom big. This is it. This doesn't need to be big. Yeah, Mystique's okay. This was the math we had. Sweet. Cool. Great win. Perfect example of the deck. Victory. Yeah, that felt good, man. This deck actually is going okay, guys. Oh, it didn't reset my stats, though, man. That's annoying. Shoot, I literally... Or maybe it did? Oh, maybe it did. They're just worse than I thought. <laughs> they're just a little worse than I thought. Uh, I did reset them, but they're a little worse. We're 50-50. Plus one cube so far. Which I'll say is is uh, definitely better than our last build. That did not feel nearly as good. And I think we're learning a little bit about this exactly. Hey, Popcorn, what's up, man? Uh, okay, that's fine. Eternity range, Lizard will we'll win this with Sunspot Lizard, yeah. Oh, maybe not. Spider-Man me? Spider-Man me? Uh, dude, Doc Hawk would actually be pretty cool. Just rip their entire hand. I would like that. That'd be fun. Uh, I don't 
have the sunspot variant. Was this like a bundle or something? <gasps> Space stone. They, they can move out. That's good. Oh, man. Dude, we, we, dude guys, we got to cut Doc Hawk. Man, he sucks. Oh, my God, dude. Why is it every single Doc Ock that I've ever played gets answered by Valkyrie or Shang-Chi? It's every single time. It's actually every single time. I'm losing it. Every single one. Now, the good news is, right, like, we can just sack this lane and try to win elsewhere, but... That's easier said than done, really. Easier said than done. Surprised they, uh... Oh, I guess Valkyrie's fine to move out. They're all the same, right? Yeah. Opponent <sighs> if I go for, like, a Shuri Nemrod... Shuri... Shuri goes probably in that case mid and Nimrod goes left and then I Venom left <sighs> I mean you should not really play into this snap it, you should you should retreat because this game is against us but oh can I actually hit the curve, dude? The dream curve? If Big House wasn't Big House, we could go here and, and play for the Zola, but it's not really that good because of board space. Rock and all this garbage here. But if we actually hit a Carnage or Deathlock, is it 50-50 here to hit a pretty good follow-up? I don't know if it's still good enough, though, is the thing. Um, Is it good enough? Oh, uh, we didn't hit it anyway. I mean, Big House really screwed me here, man. We'd have a lot more options with with Big House. Uh, oh! why are they? What? I guess they had a small hand, but it's not that small. I mean, they as they play it, they lose dinosaur. Yes, but they're up in three spots. How do you retreat when you're ahead in three locations? Yeah, maybe the, all four cards couldn't go here and then... I don't know though, man. You have such a lead. I would love to know what that hand is. I just can't imagine what that hand is that you don't feel favored there. They were ahead by like 20 plus power. I guess Nimrod's a new card. Maybe they're scared of it, you know? Uh, Ravenor, your redemption. Oh, here I see. Are you winning? Uh, yes. Five and four with this list. Earlier tonight, we absolutely blew up with a Galactus deck. Just crazy good. Uh, how does this deck work? Um, this deck works by making a big Nimrod and then duplicating it with Venoms, Carnages, or Zolas. Ooh. Ooh, hello, Mr. Nimrod. I think we leave him alone potentially in that case for the Zola. We don't have a lot. I mean, Lizard's like good there, but kind of risky. You don't really want to. I guess if we had a Venom, we could Lizard there safely. Oh, okay. 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 Doc Hawk also kind of interesting here too sometimes because you can, theirs don't get the benefit right. I think we played Matt earlier. I think they were that Destroyer... They might have been that destroyer deck with the the Nimrod, right? We want to hit Shuri here. I'll skip a turn and everything. I don't care. We've got sunspots. So skipping a turn's okay. Shuri me, baby. Shuri me, baby. Deathlock, well, at least he's big, right? That's cool. Oh, Mr. Negative, I take it back. Dang, I, the portrait should have told us that, right? Zabu off the negative. Wow, you're a god, dude. We're missing Shuri, so Nimrod's only going to be 10 here. That's pretty iffy, man. I don't love that. 
Uh, I mean, we can hit Shuri here, so it's... Uh... Do I ever play the Carnage here just because... It gives me an extra roll on the Shuri. Carnage would eat whatever comes out of this, so losing a buff on it doesn't matter, right? It gives me two rolls on... It gives me two rolls on, on Shuri. And then that makes the Nimrod insane. Although, if we lose the Carnage, we don't really have a Nimrod activator is the problem. <laughs> Currently, anyway. Uh, I think this is safer, because we can still maybe do... I don't know. We still have a chance to hit Shuri, of course. I'm a I'm a god. It's easy when you're just really good. <laughs> uh, now we need another destroyer, though. We need Venom or Zola, right? Oh, there's the Venom. Okay. Well, I mean, this is looking pretty good. It's hard to beat negative decks, though. So one Iron Man changes their whole world. So I don't want to. I don't want to sign us up for this too much yet, but looking okay. I am yeah, Iron Man Iron at 10, Man. dude. <laughs> the good news is we're not actually really invested in, in Shuri's Lab too much. I mean, I, I guess a little bit though, huh? Because we... Um, yeah, in fact, are we ever better off here just playing the venom well actually does venom go to 46 i mean it's still not enough though is it it's still not enough um so we could actually carnage here and then like venom here or i guess actually we'd want a venom here because i want the power going here don't i so that puts 20 here. Venom eats that. It's We've got 20 th 23, 30 here, and then another 40 here. I think that's right, right? Oh yeah, Venom writes bad with Quantum Tunnel. Yeah, 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 that's, a, that's another reason, but I think this is okay. They put so much power here. I think we're actually fine. I think we might have this. I don't know. How big can they really get mid? That's not big enough. They they overcommitted left. I think. We lose a little of the sewer system, but still plenty large. Venom even a little extra buffed. Okay. Cool, dude. Really cool. Good win. That was a tough one. Really surprised they double stacked this. It felt so sufficiently big. Although I will say if they hadn't, I think we could have outpaced it. I don't know if the Venom doubles or not is the thing. Um, I don't know if he doubles based on the, po it does say after. I think he does, right? I think he would have gone to like, what did we say 46 or something? So if they hadn't had the Mystique here, right? They, they would actually be at 50 and then another 14 under. Yeah, I guess, I guess we would have. I think if they hadn't done this, we would have won left. So I'm not sure they had it. This is just crazy power output. Shuri into Shuri's lab was was a high roll for real. Reed is coming in with his huge rod. Only, <laughs> dude, he, dude, the Nimrod does look a little sus to me. By the way, that uh, that appearance is just a little bit suspect. I gotta say. Uh. He does double after eating. That's what I thought too. Is Shuri essential? Yes, yeah. I think you need Shuri to make the Nimrod big enough here. It's not interesting. So guys, we've actually managed to string together another pretty solid win rate on the back of this deck. So we're up to 60% now and plus five on cubes. That's not bad. I think especially because a couple Lamentus one games just completely ruined us. I don't know if that other one was a previous deck or not, but uh, really not too bad. This is another fun way to play this deck. I, um... It's very cool to see Nimrod big after seeing someone else fail for five hours. Has he been out for five hours? Wait. 
Hasn't he only been out for three hours and 56 minutes? I mean, I guess maybe you just round it up. I don't know. That's fine. At first, I was thinking five hours was like earlier today, but that's it has almost been five hours. So my, my reaction there was not commensurate with the exaggeration. I was thinking, wait, that, that's like noon. He's been out since noon. Um, okay. I'm going to play a couple more. Hopefully get a, maybe one or two more interesting games. Uh, all right. Uh, Nexus is a little bit weird for us. Theoretically, a Shuri Doc Ock could be cool, but we <laughs> we've seen that backfire. Um, I might want to just storm it out. In which case, we might want to lizard it. Sometimes it is nice to have spots for two Nimrods, though. Later, might want to go for the double rod. Yeah, uh, let's put lizard mid for now. Let's see. Armor, okay. That's not gonna be an action lane for Nimrod, so that's a good storm spot, maybe. Okay. Could do storm next turn if I wanna do Nakia now. Doesn't really change anything, right? We're still playing Nimrod on five here, and then hoping to hit. Well, this changes a lot, actually. We kinda need Zola or carnage and venom but either way this is still probably the move zola would be good oh yeah there we go see we haven't really had a zola game yet man finally a zola game so this means we're contesting mid and left i think the concern is if they do add a lot of power mid we might have trouble because they're just getting an extra buff, right? If they have like four units there, oh, that's Wind even more trouble. My oh hand. my god, bro. <sighs> okay, this might actually save us, man. Just pull all their power here and then dump out of it and try to win these. I like it. I like it. Okay, they didn't play for Stark Tower either. Is this a Galactus by any chance? No way, right? Moon Girl on a two card hand. Hulk, Titania, and Cosmo. Okay. Dude, the, ti <laughs> Dude, the Titania absolutely wrecks me because I can't Zola. I guess, do I need to though is another question. Like, why do I Zola? But it also means they can play a card here. Oh, Cosmo. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't even matter. Uh, so they have they have four cards in hand, but or no. Oh, we copied one card off the Moon Girl, I guess. That, that two we saw was already copied. And then one new card. This theoretically wins outside of a Doctor Doom scenario. If I hit Lizard here... That would be nuts, but it feels weird. This is the most raw power I can add, but it loses to like a Dr. Doom. I don't know, man, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they didn't have it. Okay, that was a Victory. weird game. Once again, by the way, <laughs> Doc Ock screwed us every time. I mean, it was nice that we had him as a backup plan, to be fair. Like we, you know, otherwise we were totally, totally screwed. So it was cool to have a, a, a pivot there since the Nimrod got cost increased, but still just utter garbage. Okay, this is a good start. Yeah, actually hitting the Nimrod with both Nakia and Shuri is insane. This this is probably, oh my God. I was gonna say this is snap worthy, but I'm not snapping because I want to play this out and um, this is the absolute perfect hand. It, it couldn't get any better than this. 
We're going to have an 18, no, no, 36 power Nimrod. Oh, I hope the opponent doesn't concede, man. I want to see this play out. I really want to see it play out so hard. <laughs> this could not be better. Oh, man. I almost wish they would snap so that they're like more invested and, you know, can't, can't hop out of here, but. Uh, all right. Shuri, um, I guess we play the, oh, that's fine. I guess we play the Nimrod left to play around Arrow, right? So, cause we want the Arnim Zola going here anyway. Right. And I think that's, I think we do the, 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 the I think for that exact same reason, we play the Zola instead of the Venom Deathlock. Right. That's totally fine too. We're going to be playing there anyway, so all good. I mean, this has to be an arrow on, on six, right? I mean, we're revealing first anyway, so I guess arrow doesn't really matter, but just save for this way Venom doesn't get eaten or whatever. This could be beautiful, dude. <laughs> this could be beautiful, dude. No! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Trust KK Sparkles. No. Let's just all pretend because I want to put this in the video, right? So let's just map this out. I, I could, uh, you know, I could Photoshop it here. So this eats the Nimrod, right? Zola puts a 36 power Nimrod here, a 36 power Nimrod here. And then the Nimrod himself says, hey, man, I got destroyed. So he puts a 36 power Nimrod here and a 36 power Nimrod here. So we have 72 power here and we have 76 power here and we have negative one power here. She's a streamer? Oh, KK Sparkles, no. Yeah, Photoshop it, yeah. <laughs> that is the perfect example of this deck though. You just have to imagine a little bit. But you can see it, it, see it in action, man. Crazy Comertage upside. That's wild. I mean, we probably didn't need the Comertage. Uh, I, I think an 18 power uh, dude would have been sufficient, right? But pretty cool to see. So let me see, guys. How many wins do I have with this deck? Let's see. I have... Dude, we're up to eight and four, guys. Dang. I thought this deck was garbage, but we're actually not looking too bad. You know, still very small sample sizes, of course, but it's it, it's certainly playing a lot better than our previous iterations of this kind of Zola action card, right? Like, this is nuts. Compared to the old ones. The old ones were like two and six or something when I quit, which, you know, you could explain by variance, but this one does feel a lot tighter. I, I think having the early game plays to save the Venom and Carnage and Deathlock for late has felt really good. So being able to fill with the Sunspot, the Okoye, the Nakia stuff, that's felt really nice. Yeah, true. We'd be up even higher on cubes with, with better snaps probably, yeah. Yeah, Doc Ock definitely, uh, you know, in, in theory, I still think it makes a lot of sense. In, in theory, it's nice to have that backup if this doesn't all line up for you. In reality, he seems to be whiffing a lot. That might be kind of a meta choice, like, you know, people have too many big cards in hand sort of thing. But in theory, I like the idea of, of dumping your opponent's cards in one spot and then shifting out of them with Zola. You know, 20 power Doc Ock move to the other two lanes when all their good stuff's in one place. It's just, they always seem to have Valkyrie or Shang-Chi or Cosmo, and then we can't we can't hit it, so. Let's try one more. Let's try one more. Uh, okay. Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> that is quite a Sokovia. My build around card and their, uh, their weight condition gone. Okay. Um, I mean, Shuri, like Doc Ock, like we said, still, it's still a weight condition here, I think, for us. So we'll play it out. We've got Shuri lines. Outside of that, we don't have a lot, but if their whole deck is built towards Galactus, they certainly might not have a lot either. And there's our Shuri, which is good news, I guess. 
Uh, do we care about preserving an Arnim Zola lane? Actually, probably yeah, right? So maybe we hold this Deathlock. Kind of sucks there's nowhere good to play it if I want to protect an Arnim Zola lane, but uh, I guess my only other good Arnim Zola target might actually be Deathlock as well, since Nimrod's gone. If we don't hit the Doc Ock, we might need the Deathlock. Well, let's pass. Sunspot also could have been a good enough one if we hit it early, right? Like you could scale up for Arnim Zola pretty well, but we'll see. Yeah, again, Carnage ain't it, man. I would love to hit a Doc Ock here. I'm going to be really sad if I have to play Deathlock. It might still be enough because 10 power mid is going to win and, you know, maybe 10 here adds enough. Oh, baby, that's the one. That's the one. So I, this just, it, this is, this is, this is Doc Ock's last chance to prove himself, okay? We need him to not hit Shang-Chi. We need him to not hit Valkyrie. We need him to not hit Cosmo, okay? This is his final redemption arc. He's failed us like three or four times in a row. If he doesn't work here, he will never actually work. This is, this is it. This is the last chance. I've given up on him after this. His redemption arc is complete. Let's see. Okay, that's a good start. A really good start. That's fine too, actually. Does add one power here, but we beat that. Okay. Seems like we might also really be disrupting their game plan too. This looks like the list we built earlier. Oh no, we didn't have Zola, I guess. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine! Doc Ock! You did it! Oh! Interesting. Now I have a dilemma. I don't want to move Doc Ock. I think we just move either of these, right? They top decked one card. Doc Ock doesn't beat 30, so we don't move Doc Ock. We just, just either of these hopefully wins Death's Domain, right? Null? I mean, if they have Null and Shuri and Wong and Artem Zola and Venom and Destroyer, yeah, Taskmaster's a problem too, but I... <laughs> it's a top deck, right? I can't... I can't be expected to play around these top decks. Like, I have to give myself a little bit of leeway. <gasps> Don't hit mid. Don't hit mid! Enough said, bub. Hit lizard! Oh! <laughs> god dang it! Oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh lord. That was a 1 in 3 followed by a 50 50. Oh no, that was scary, dude. <laughs> oh god. That was a fun game, though, dude. Nimrod did not matter, but a fun game. Okay, okay, that's a good one to end on, guys. Doc Ock proved himself. Good win. The deck is actually up to, uh,. Oh, 69% win rate, guys, and plus nine cubes, man, with some pretty casual snapping patterns, too. That's not bad. Not bad. I, when I say not bad, actually really good. That's a good average cube rate and a great win rate. 69 average cube rate and a 69% win rate. What in the world? <laughs> how, did I, how did we come up with a 69% win rate and 0.69 cubes? What in the world? All right, I gotta go. Let me drop a raid before I head out, everybody. Let's send you all on your merry way. Uh, I gotta go work on some videos. Two, two cool decks, actually, for videos tonight. Both Nimrod decks worked out pretty well at the end of it. That was cool. Um. All right, who am I raiding? Let's see. I don't know. This looks fine. I'm trying to find a raid. It's taking forever, so I'm just going to pick somebody. All right, everybody. Have fun. Love you all the time. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Good luck out there with your Nimrods and so on. May your, may, may, may your rods get really big. Uh, love you all the time. Thanks for watching, and until next time, game on.